changes that Columbus undoubtedly saw. And in some ways, they probably haven't changed all that much with the stately palms still lining the sandy beaches. host of Nashville Insider, where we bring you the latest in country music news and happenings. Join us as we interview your favorite artists and go behind the scenes of country music's hottest events. Watch Nashville Insider right here on Cayman 27. If it matters to you, it matters to us. We're Cayman 27, Cayman Informed. This is the only morning show that matters. Cayman Crosstalk. Cayman Crosstalk. A nation is a people living on the lives they choose. Celebrating when they win, crying. Christmas beef, bought and tongue fish fry. That's gay man. Your car break down, you get a lift to town. That's gay man. Sunday cricket, agriculture ground. That's gay man. A downtown beach where children swim. That's gay man. Mr. Jim, remember him. That's gay man. Spots landing and Christmas breeze. That's gay man. Miss Pony, macaroni and cheese. That's gay man. The opinions expressed by K-Man Crosstalk, its hosts, callers, or guests are not those of Hurley's Media or its sponsors. Here are your latest news headlines from the Cayman 27 News Team on Rooster 101's Cayman Crosstalk. Now, here's the news. A 
another visitor drowns in Cayman. What's up, everyone? I'm Doug Dodds. Here's today's top stories from the Cayman 27 Newsroom. A male visitor dies in Cayman's 12th water-related death of the year. Police have yet to release the identity of the victim, but they say the incident happened on Tuesday around 1045 in the morning at Georgetown's waterfront where the man was snorkeling and encountered difficulties. In other news today, the Bodentown Quarry Fire that smoldered for three weeks is extinguished, but residents in the vicinity of the long-burning fire say a government information services press release downplays the severity of the toxic smoke that they say they experienced. Fire services said due to the remote location of the quarry, there was never really a risk to the surrounding neighborhood. The fire was extinguished last Thursday. Cayman 27 reached out to fire services to clarify what tests were being done to ensure that the smoke was, in fact, not toxic as they claim, but we did not hear back. And finally today, police are searching for a man who they say assaulted a woman in Sunday in West Bay. Police say emergency services were dispatched to a West Bay location following a 911 call to investigate reports that a woman was attacked by a man she knew who was armed with a knife. The man was not on scene when police officers arrived. For more news on these stories and others, click on Kman 27 on KY or watch the news tonight at 6 with a replay at 7. For Hurley's Media, I'm Doug Dodds. Have a great day. Be a part of the conversation on Kman Crosstalk by calling the Superior Auto Hotline. 233-1019 or message us on the K-Man Crosstalk Facebook page. Now, back to K-Man Crosstalk on Rooster 101 and Simulcast Live on K-Man 27. Good morning, K-Man Islands, and I hope that you're all having a wonderful day so far. And thank you. Thank you very much for tuning in to K-Man Crosstalk. All of you and K-Man that are broadcasting, that are watching us on TV, and those around the world that are streaming us live as well. I just want to say a very good morning to you. I see that uh, we got London in the house, and we also have Brussels. We also have Dubai and New Zealand and uh, Toronto, Canada. I just want to sincerely thank you all very much for tuning in this morning and for just letting us be part of your days and part of your whole entire evening, if that's what it is, where you're at this morning. Great pleasure to always be with all of you. Um, this morning, we're going to have another dynamic show for all of you. We're going to be talking with a new play, an award-winning Trinidadian play that's going to be put on in the Cayman Islands. And um, we're going to be speaking with uh, some of the actors. We're also going to be speaking with um, the director of it all. It should be very, very exciting. We hope that you all join us with that one. That's coming up very shortly as well. And um, then we're going to get in to a discussion that has been really coming through a lot on the social media um, lately. And we have a barrister at law coming into the studios, Dr. Steve McPhil, along with um, the Honorable Gilbert McLean. And the question that we're going to discuss this morning, we want you all to participate in it. And I'm going to give you those participation avenues or mediums that you can actually do so in. But here's a question that has been coming in a lot on social media, primarily through our email and also on our Facebook page in the back end of it. Can local politicians be prosecuted for acting in bad faith, even without the standards in public life law underfoot or in place or in force? That is a question that has been coming across um, simply because a lot of people feel that over the years there's been a lot of a lot of acting in bad faith that has cost the people money, cost the taxpayers money, um, cost the FFR to come into effect, all the various different things, if we're looking back on all of it. And those are the things that kind of been feeling through. And I just gotta get brave enough people to really tackle it. And when I reached out to Dr. McPhee, he's never shy to really come in and discuss these kind of matters as well. So it should be very exciting show and we're going to be talking about other things and other things that have been dominating also in the Cayman Islands is how can we diversify our economy um, and gambling is an issue. Here was a question that came up and we'll probably ask the Honorable Gilbert McLean and um, Dr. McPhee this question too when they come up. They were saying that they understand and I'll, I'm not going to lie to no one. I didn't have the opportunity last um last evening really to research this topic but it, it is this poster's understanding 
that within, if the cruise berthing facility goes in, all of these vessels allow gambling. And with the new changes in the shipping registry and gambling law and so forth that allows um, these vessels to dock right alongside the terra firma of the Cayman Islands within or waters, they're allowed to keep their casinos open. So those that the Bahamian government is complaining that, that, that don't come off and don't spend any money is spending money within the casinos there and sipping on their cocktails and so forth within that environment. If that is a breach of Section 19 of the Constitution that I keep praying and talking about, which is fair, equal, and proportionate treatment and lawful treatment, whether or not that is fair to everyone else, and if that is the case, then we should start talking about legalized gambling in the respect of casinos and possibly lottery. And that's the segue to me right now. I just want to say congratulations. I understand that is probably a sole ticket winner in South Carolina. And congratulations to that particular winner. I sincerely, sincerely, with all fiber of my being, I'm not vexed in any way. I'm just so happy for that individual. And I hope that they, they spend it right. They get the right advisors all around them. And they make their world and the world a better place. Apparently, they're going to be getting somewhere in the region right off the bat if they take the cash right off. I think it's $937 million that they're going to be getting. And when that state taxes and everything is taken out, it should be around about 689 or something like that, a um, million dollars cash to them. I can be wrong, but that's nevertheless over a over, let's put it this way, over a half a billion dollars in cash. They're going to be richer today. So congratulations to those individuals, but to my wonderful listening audience, I know I promised you on Monday that if I won, I will share with all of you. Well, I'm sorry to say that I can't do that with the Mega Millions. But however, we have one more opportunity tonight, ladies and gentlemen, with the Powerball. Powerball is up. Close to $700 million, and I will continue to say if God grants me the wonderful blessing of having that one jackpot winner, my wonderful listening audience, especially those that I can register on our Facebook, I will send you a wonderful Christmas gift. I promise you I will reach out to every last one of you, the nine, the 4,900 odd that are following me right now. If you are there, I will reach out to every one of you, no matter what corner of the world that you're in, and I will make a cashier's check payable to all of you and that you can have a wonderful Christmas. That is just my pledge. So I got one more opportunity, Christopher, one more opportunity tonight. I'm crossing my fingers and toes. My toes are getting a little fatter, so I don't know if I can cross them anymore, but I am I'm holding out, holding out for all hope. And they were saying the other day that, the chances of one person winning both jackpots last night and tonight is one and 88 quadrillion, quadrillion. That is 15 zeros. I never knew the number actually went up that high, but quadrillion. Yes, quadrillion. I was doing the stats. In fact, yes, ladies and gentlemen, instead of researching, for the gambling aspect with the cruise ships, I was looking up lottery and what I'm going to do with my lottery winnings. But nevertheless, I just want to let all of you know that um, hopefully if, you know, if one more chance, just one more chance, and I will share it with all of you. But I'm always curious to see what people will do if they were blessed <clears throat> with that type of money as well. And um, I want you all to participate today in the different conversations Remember, this number is 233-1019, 233-1019. And that is the in-studio number that you can talk directly on air and to our guest. <clears throat> and that is sponsored by our wonderful friends at Superior Auto. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're looking for a garage or a mechanic or somewhere to just take your vehicle, even your boat, to be honest with you, they can do everything for almost every vehicle, whether or not it's on water or whether or not it's on roadway systems, they can work on it. And 
if you're looking for a place that is reasonable, that is honest, and that you don't have to worry about something going wrong or being overcharged or the bill is more worth more than your car is, well, you got to check out Superior Auto. Seriously, I'm not supposed to say that, but I'm just speaking on personal testimony. Plus, the, the two individuals, the principals of Superior Auto are two fantastic community members that are always giving back. And so I can guarantee you when you give, they also give. And the principles of the company reflect that as well. In addition, I have a WhatsApp number, which is 324-324-1019, 324-1019. Just want to say to all of you, if you send me a voice note during the show, I won't be able to hear what you're saying. I will, I'm able to listen to it more so after the show because it's a lot of detail that I need to go and click it and so forth, simply because of how it runs through the board here. So if you want me to express what you're saying, do it in writing. I will be happy to do that for all of you. In addition, we have our email, which is kmancrosstalk at hurleysmedia.ky. That is kmancrosstalk at hurleysmedia.ky. Or simply go on our Facebook page, which is kmancrosstalk. Um, just a little editor's note here. Um, if you're over at Cayman 27 Facebook page or even their web page and watching us, if you communicate or drop a little message or comment there, I will not be able to see those things, ladies and gentlemen. So simply just go up to your search bar and type in Cayman Crosstalk, and I'll be happy, more than happy, to um, read your comments. And if you haven't liked us, please like us. I've been loving and appreciating your likes. And, and frankly, I just want to say to all of you, it would be remiss of me not to simply say thank you for the wonderful comments that you all have been posting on the Facebook page about the show and about how we deliver the show to you. Thank you very much, and thank you for your participation. And I'm almost out of time, but I'm going to go to the phone, and I wonder who that may be. Good morning, caller. Good morning, Mr. <laughs> Talker. This is number one from the back. Good morning. How are you, sir? I'm listening to you. Are you praising people and don't mean a word of it? That's right. Yes, you know it. Yeah. I, I, didn't, I, even I didn't even mention you. <laughs> that's why I told you, thank God. <laughs> because, you know, I tell you the truth. <laughs> What's going on, buddy? I'm trying to listen to you good. I want to ask you a question when it comes about this lot to thing me because I don't understand it. This thing is a billion dollars. How come we... If you win, you only get so many million because you take out taxes. Correct, correct. Um, when you win, they automatically the the lottery comp the lottery um, institution themselves, so that they can start a new pot. And usually, a new pot starts off with forty million dollars, no matter. Yeah, if it's... Tell, tell them stuff like, must tell you how much you're gonna win. Well, uh, who who gives a if you're gonna win more than a dollar, more than a ticket, you're a winner in my mind. Um, but it goes back to start the new pot, and then also it goes to education as well. Um, those are some of the things. I, I, this is how I understand how the lottery commission works, and bear in mind that not all states carry the lottery as well. So that, that has to be bear in mind when it comes to the United States of America. And then where if you win in a certain state, then you have to pay the taxes there. I understand your income tax is considered an income. So whatever it is, for example, if you're in New York City, I, I think they said it's 8.5% um, that you will have to pay. In Florida, I think it's a lot lower than that at about 6%. Um, and then the rest of it is yours. Um, and if you got an attorney, more likely they will they will take a something off the top as well. But it's All usually right. it usually goes back into education, supposedly. And the education then, for those, the winning state usually gets a bulk rate of it. Okay. And listen, I want to say something to you. I don't know if I should say this on the air or not, but Rooster been giving a lot of trouble, man. Over radio or over TV? On the radio. Okay. Explain so you I can help you. Not okay. all like yesterday, you cut out three or four different times during your show? On radio? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. And, I, and somebody else was here with me so I can prove it. I know you lie all the time. You lie like a person. I know rug, that. So, yeah. I know. I, I I know that where you took it from, but I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you just walk into my footsteps. That's what you're trying to say, but you don't want to public, no. 
my mentor. <laughs> well, number one, I'm, I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I'm writing that down. I'm writing that down. And I'm going to make sure my technical staff looks at that as well because I, I can tell you, and I know I say it to you all the time, but whenever I mention it to, to Mr. Marion that we had an issue over the BRAC that we couldn't broadcast, I can tell you his ears turned beet red um, because it's, as you well know, we're one of the only other private radio stations that are trying to broadcast over to the BRAC. That's uh, right. And that means a great deal to him, and <clears throat> I will make sure that that happens and that's taken care of right away. But I got to yeah. do my Dell time check right now, and I want you right, to help me. I, I know that's why you call me, and I know that's why no, you're waiting there. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, stop your lighting, you Persian rug, you. All right, ready? ready? If I'm Persian, you're French. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got to compose myself. French all right, <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, I, I am going to tell all of you this. If, if you didn't know already, it's a pretty cool deal. Subway, ladies and gentlemen. Now, as you well know, if you walk in, you're going to see the coffee stand over in the corner. Remember, Subway sells coffee, too. And right now, you can get a free cookie with your choice of your choice with any coffee, any cup of coffee. Just think of that logically. You go anywhere else, you got to buy coffee, and you got to buy your little cookie or your little treat, your pastry. But Subway will give you a cookie of your choice with any coffee that you buy. And really... Just like the, the, the two-for-one special, it may be a limited-time offer, so go and try to grab that up right away. Remember, Subway has six stores that you can enjoy this wonderful deal at. One as far as East End, the other one as far as West Bay and everything in between. But remember, they have opened two stores 24-7. One in West Bay at Centennial Towers, the other one in Central Georgetown. Subway. Eat fresh, eat delicious! This hour of Game Man Crosstalk is powered by Subway. Subway, with six locations across Game Man, you know it makes sense to choose Subway. Subway, eat fresh, eat delicious. More of Game Man Crosstalk is next on Rooster 101 and simulcast live on Game Man 27. Heat resistant, scratch resistant, stain resistant, functional and durable. Paramount Carpets brings you the beauty of granite like no one else. Choose from a large selection of quality granite from Italy and Brazil. Paramount Carpets guarantees on-time delivery and professional installation. Granite, from the earth to your home. We do a whole lot more than just cover your floor at Paramount, Paramount Carpets. Sometimes having a middleman is not a bad thing, especially when it comes to insurance. Do you know that when it comes to cost, ease, speed, and peace of mind, insurance brokers ranked higher than when customers buy direct? So, for all your insurance needs, call Fidelity Insurance. We're the middleman you want. Call us today at 949-7822. Fidelity, we're good for you. Have you heard? They have new daily meal deals at Popeyes. A different meal with sides every day of the week for the same price of just $3.99. Monday is chicken soup with rice. Tuesday for the chicken bowl. Two tenders on Wednesday. A loaded chicken wrap on Thursday. It's all about that shrimp on Friday. Chicken nuggets to start the weekend. And the mixed two-piece to finish. The new daily meal deals from Popeyes. A different meal every day served with the world of famous best dressed chicken for only $3.99. Only at Popeyes, Louisiana Kitchen on Eastern Avenue. Three of the finest liquor stores on Ireland are located on West Bay Road on beautiful Seven Mile Beach. Tortuga Fine Wines and Spirits Governor's Square, the greenery near the Strand and Seven Mile Shops Plaza. Tortuga Fine Wines and Spirits boasts the widest selection and even offers free wine and spirit tastings at all Seven Mile Beach locations every Friday from 5 till 7 p.m. Family owned and operated since 1984. Line, 233-1019. Or message us on the K-Man Crosstalk Facebook page. Now, back to K-Man Crosstalk on Rooster 101 and simulcast live on K-Man 27. This hour of K-Man Crosstalk is powered by Subway. 
Subway. With six locations across Game Man, you know it makes sense to choose Subway. Subway. Eat fresh. Eat delicious. More of Game Man Crosstalk is next on Rooster 101 and simulcast live on Game Man 27. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back and happy, happy Wednesday to all of you. It's a wonderful day. We're nearing the end of the week, and I just want to say a very good morning to two special ladies in the studios with us this morning. One is no stranger because I've seen her on the stage and I've, I've enjoyed her for rundown for the last several years as well. And I just want to say a wonderful welcome to these two wonderful actors from the CNCF. And I wouldn't mind if you just introduce yourself to the Kimmon Islands and to the world because we got people logging on all over the world this morning. All right. Hi, world. I'm Leslie Ann Bernard, um, actress, um, but in this capacity, stage manager for Ooh, the... Stage manager? Yeah, for the Moon and uh, on a Rainbow Shawl production. Wow. Well, my name's Lily. Well, hello. My name's <laughs> Lily. I'm a new actress. This is actually my first, like, real production. Oh, really? Yeah, so I'm new to the li whole drama. And they and they tossed you in at the deep end, saying you're going to do the rounds on the on the media and so forth, <laughs> Lily. If you want to be on stage, you got to go and do everything else. But welcome. No, I actually volunteered. You volunteered. Excellent. Well, you know that that breaks all the ice and everything yeah, out yeah. there. So that's yeah. well, that's wonderful. But Leslie, mm -hmm. you have been known to to really be an integral role and part of Rundown for a long time and other plays as well, but you're known, really, for Rundown, in yeah. my mind. <laughs> um, I think you do a, a fantastic job. Uh, Thank it's you. always hilarious. But now you, and for those that never been to a live production, if you don't mind from an actor's standpoint, mm -hmm. and then I want to ask you from a stage manager's standpoint, what does it feel like and what does it mean? Because I can tell you, there's nothing like a live production. You can sit down and watch a TV show, and that's yeah. probably 47 takes. Definitely. On that aspect of it. But there's a vibe and there's a feeling of yeah. people on the stage. And just like this, crap happens. Yes. But the show <laughs> must go on. Must go on. And you're sometimes improving. Sometimes you may get a little brain, you know, blank, and you still got to do what you got to do. Yeah. And it just goes on. And, and really great actors like all of you, you don't even know that you missed the beat. Mm -hmm. And to me, that is something that I believe, this is just me, yeah. every child and every person should experience live theater. That definitely. I mean, Woody, you've said it all. Mm -hmm. There is something raw and animated and alive, you know, that um, theater really gives everybody an opportunity to experience. You know, it is incomparable to, I mean, I do appreciate uh, film, but for me, theater is my baby. It's my love. It gives you the opportunity to be in the moment. Mm -hmm. And it has to be so much bigger than real life, you know? Yeah. yeah. And the thing with it is, too, that, I, that I've gathered, Lily, <laughs> is that if you make a joke or something of that nature, I may be only laughing with myself or maybe someone next to me within my couch, um, or even if they don't laugh. But even in a theater, if you're making me laugh or making me cry, mm -hmm. you feel that energy. Yeah. around the whole entire theater. Everyone would bust out at the same time. Yeah, with a, you know, yeah. It, yeah exactly. Yeah. And that is something I believe is almost priceless. And have you ever been to live theater before? Yeah, like um, I've watched Rundown like for a couple of years. And I guess that like, as you said, with the whole transcending, like when you're, okay, so let's say you're on stage Right. I guess, like, the energy from the crowd once you, like, act and, let's mm -hmm. say, the crowd, like, laughs, it gives you the energy to go on. Like, the nervousness, like, suddenly just goes away because the ener energy from the crowd inspires you to do so much more. Yeah, that's so, that's so true. A lot of it is from the audience, hence why live theater. Yeah. All right. Well, I want you to talk about this particular show. And, Leslie, because it is an award-winning oh, yeah. play from, the Trin from Trinidad. Yeah. And... I can say that I've, I love CNCF and also the Cayman Drama Society. I go to as much live productions as I possibly can and try to introduce my, my young son, my daughter. <laughs> but my son, my 10-year-old, <laughs> takes to it like a duck to water. He yeah. absolutely loves it. Um, I want you to talk to us about this show, what it means, and why did you all pick this one? Because I know when you're going through a lot of things 
with especially Dr. Matu. Mm -hmm. He wants only the best. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. I've, I've sat and I've listened to him and I respect him greatly. And he just doesn't settle. And then he's one of those people that's like, you know what? If you want to do something, I yeah, want you to you do, do the well. best and do yes. it well. If not, get off the stage. Oh, he yeah. can tell you about it. Right on point right there. <laughs> so, and tell us why this particular play. All right. Well, first of all, Moon on a Rainbow Shawl, um, it was written by a Trini actor, right? Errol John. And it is an award-winning play that has been staged all over the world. I remember falling in love with this play when I, when I was in drama school. It is one of those pieces of work that is actually used to teach acting or used as, um, as a, let's say, as work that, that, that student actors explore with. Uh, well, I didn't choose the play. Mr. Matu um, did. And I believe that he had done it previously some years ago in Florida, mm -hmm. where he actually um, won an award for the set that he had designed. As we know, Mr. Matu is an excellent set designer, yes, right? Yes. And I'm thinking that um, because there was so much value in the work that he decided to bring it to Cayman and to give the Caymanian actors an opportunity to be a part of this. Um, it is simply a play about a number of persons who are trapped in circumstance. They are trapped in this yard, this big yard, right? Which is basically um, the depths of poverty. And it's about how their lives are interconnected, you know, with wanting to get out of the situations, you know, and we get to see the different struggles that each of these characters have an experience and live and even how within the struggles they have the opportunity to to even have hopes and dreams and to you know be human mm. so that's really what moon and a rainbow shawl is it's a a play about love it's a play about struggle it, it's full of drama it's intense you know mm. it's sweet i mean i hopeful. personally i'm just yeah it's hopeful yeah, and I think everybody really needs to come out and come and see this production. You know, that's something that I believe that, that humanity needs to always be reinforced with Lily is hope. Yeah. And I want you to talk about your character and why, <laughs> you know, when you audition. Kind of curious, uh, before we get into that, did you just go or you heard about this, this call and you decided, I want to go for this particular play? Or you just went and said, you know what, I want to, I would just, I don't care what production it is, put me on your list and call me when something comes up. How did that work? Yeah, um, actually, I asked Miss Bernard because she's my drama teacher. Okay. Um, I asked her, like, if there's any opportunities that I can do because I love acting. Ever since I was, like, small, I loved acting. So I asked Miss Bernard, Miss Bernard, if there's anything that I can audition for, I'm going to go for it. Like, as you said, like, I don't care what production it is. Put me in the list. Like, that's exactly what was in my mind. And when I auditioned for the play, I was really nervous because I didn't know anyone in the room. Right. But then it's like, I just went for it because it's acting. It's what I do and it's what I love. So. How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? Um, I'm 13. 13? Yeah. What? <laughs> and uh, obviously, as a teacher, she can see the potential and so forth in you. Mm -hmm. Now, talk to us about your character. Your, okay. You yeah. know, and, and, and I'm kind of curious of, how did, when you read the script as well, how did you fall into it? Was it easy? Was it difficult? Or is it a stretch? Because obviously you're an actor. You got to yeah, fill a role. Horizons. Well, yeah. um, I play Esther Adams. It's like Esther is this girl that's like really smart. She's a poet. And like she loves to read plays. She loves to learn about plays. She actually, well, should I, I don't really want to spoil it. Mm -hmm. But like it's in the first scene anyway. But like she got a scholarship. Huh. Be, and then she could like, she could win many trophies based on her, like, poetry. Right. So I guess, like, learning to become Esther was kind of difficult for me because I'm not really a poet. And, really? Yeah, I'm not really a poet. I'm not really into poems. But when I started, like, studying Esther and when I started, like, digging deep into the script and figuring out who she was, I guess her traits, like, started, like, becoming my traits because as you become, like, as you become an actress, your characters that you have to portray like becomes a part of yourself because it's obviously like auditioning for the play and then waiting for you to get called is a long time. So yeah. through that period of time, just worrying that, you know, in case I get this like character, I have to study her. So that's exactly what I did. And so you became her. Yeah, I became Esther, but like obviously because people will start noticing I, I changed. 
I don't really. Like, <laughs> so now, you're, now you're into poetry? <laughs> no, not, not really. I'm not really into like poetry deep enough, just like Esther. But like I've taken an interest in it. Well, you know, it, the thing with it is, I I gotta go and take a break right now. But how old is your character in the play? He's actually 13. Really? <laughs> yeah. Mm, well, that wasn't a hard <laughs> right stretch, <on> <laughs> you know. Less. I mean, when we come back, we're going to get a little bit more details about this and how that you all can see it when the opening act, all of those details are coming right up right after this short little message. This hour of Game Man Crosstalk is powered by Subway. Subway, with six locations across Game Man, you know it makes sense to choose Subway. Subway, eat fresh, eat delicious. More of Game Man Crosstalk is next on Rooster 101 and simulcast live on Game Man 27. It's that time of year again for the annual K-Man 27 Parade of Lights, brought to you by Bogle Insurance Brokers Limited. We're calling all boats to join us Saturday, December 1st at Kamana Bay as the water comes to life with this year's theme, Christmas Around the World. It's completely free to enter, and there's a chance to win $1,000 and two general admission tickets to Kaboo. Or enter just for fun. Private and commercial boats are welcome. For more information and to register your boat, click on kman27.ky. From happy beginnings and life choices that we make along the way. Brit K protects your lifestyle with the best insurance cover at the best possible price. Health insurance with far-reaching benefits. Family protection and long-term financial plans. Business insurance and generous employee benefits. For happy beginnings to happy ever after, visit BritK.ky. Brit K, where people come first. We do a whole lot more than just cover your floor at Paramount. Paramount Carpet. Any style, carpet or tile, insulation and drywall too. Everything's beautiful, come and see. The Paramount name means quality. It'll be a brand new world under your feet. We do a whole lot more than just cover your floor at Paramount. Paramount Carpet. Another visitor drowns in K-Man. What's up, everyone? I'm Doug Dodds. Here's today's top stories from the K-Man 27 newsroom. A male visitor dies in K-Man's 12th water-related death of the year. Police have yet to release the identity of the victim, but they say the incident happened on Tuesday around 1045 in the morning at Georgetown's waterfront, where the man was snorkeling and encountered difficulties. In other news today, the Bodtown Quarry Fire that smoldered for three weeks is extinguished, but residents in the vicinity of the long-burning fire say a government information Services press release downplays the severity of the toxic smoke that they say they experienced. Fire services said due to the remote location of the quarry, there was never really a risk to the surrounding neighborhood. The fire was extinguished last Thursday. K Man 27 reached out to fire services to clarify what tests were being done to ensure that the smoke was, in fact, not toxic as they claim, but we did not hear back. And finally, today, police are searching for a man who they say assaulted a woman on Sunday in West Bay. Police say emergency services were dispatched to a West Bay location following a 911 call to investigate reports that a woman was attacked by a man she knew who was armed with a knife. The man was not on scene when police officers arrived. For more news on these stories and others, click on kman27.ky or watch the news tonight at 6 with a replay at 7. For Hurley's Media, I'm Doug Dodds. Have a great day. Be a part of the conversation on K-Man Crosstalk by calling the Superior Auto Hotline, 233-1019. Or message us on the K-Man Crosstalk Facebook page. Now, back to K-Man Crosstalk on Rooster 101 and simulcast live on K-Man 27. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very much for tuning in. Let us be part of your morning. Happy Wednesday to all of you. 
I have a treat for those of you that really appreciate good art. And that is, I have Miss Leslie and I have Lily in the studios with us this morning. We're talking about a new show that's going to be on at the Harkwell Theater. Leslie, I want you to give us, you kind of give us a, a little overview and last aspect of it, of where the play and how it's set. And, you know, the first thing that came to mind was, you know, the Bob Marley song, you know, um, No Woman, No Cry, you know, it kind of mm, sitting down. I remember down. when we used to sit in you know, that tenement yard in Trenchtown. In Trenchtown. <laughs> you know, that kind of a, a yeah, vibe and a feeling. Kind of and, vibe, just, yeah, man. And, um, and so I'm wondering, now that we've kind of set that, that great stage, and as you know, and you said it, and I've witnessed it as well, Mr. Matu is very good at set design. And mm -hmm. being a stage manager is a difficult task. I've, I've watched a lot of plays. You've got so many moving parts, so yeah. many different people yeah. to manage. And it must be difficult because you're in the play as well. No, I'm not in no, the play. I could never, never be in the play? the play. I could not be in the play and be a stage manager. I was wondering how the heck you do that. I have, to have two heads. <laughs> I was wondering how you were, how you could do that. That was like when I saw in here, she's like actor no, and I'm stage not in manager. The play. I'm like, no, I'm not in the play. How in the world could you do it? Because I'm like that's what was building up to my question. How do you do it? I mean, do you like that's go off and news and, right and, there? And, that's fake news. <laughs> 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 <Conqueror Radio. laughs> but talk to us, uh, you know, about when it's going to start, <laughs> how much it's going to be. And, all you know, right. this is Lily's debut as well. And so we want all of her yeah, cool friends to come by as well and all her family <laughs> and everybody else and new friends that are seeing her on air. 13 years old. Yeah. Taking on a massive role. All right, Lily, you go ahead and tell them when oh, okay. and where. So, um, opening night is Thursday, November 1st. Okay. Yeah, and we run... Right after run, Halloween. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we run every Friday, Saturday, Sunday of November. Oh, every every weekend for the whole yeah. entire month of November. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yes. So, the show times are 8 p.m. And on <laughs> Sunday, I believe it's a matinee at 6. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to <laughs> double check that though. <laughs> um, tickets are $30 for an adult and 15 for students. Wonderful. So that's not very expensive. No, it's this is not. This quality work and an amazing set. And let me tell you guys, the set is incredibly realistic. Like you will feel as though you are in Trinidad in the 1950s. You need to come wow. out and, and, and watch this. You know, i kind of curious. Lily, when, when you talk to your friends about this, and obviously you say acting is, is a passion of yours. Mm -hmm. And so that's, I'm kinda, I can't wait to see you on stage, to be honest with you. Um, what do you tell your friends? Like, obviously, you, you, you seem very humble, yeah. um, to be honest with you. But uh, you always got to self-promote. I, I have a mentor, and I had a mentor, um, by the name of Kel Thompson. And when I got into real estate, you know, he says, you got to get out of your shyness. If nobody knows that you're there, yeah. you won't sell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So how do you talk to your friends, you know, about coming to this play and about what you're doing as well? Well, my friends are very supportive, and I'm glad to have friends Good. like that. Excellent. So then, like, I even sometimes, because it's a very, like, big script, and I'm not used to that, so then I sometimes bring it to school to study it, and then my friends are like, oh, what's that? I'm just like, oh, I'm in a play. And then they're like, oh, really? Can I go watch? And I'm like, yeah, no problem. And also, Me. like, my English class, like, my teacher is very supportive, and I love my whole class. So then, like, sometimes when we're having discussions, I sometimes bring it up, and I'm like, Guys, I'm in a play, so come out and watch. And then they're like, okay, when is it? And I'm like, every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of November. <laughs> and then they're like, you sound like someone that's really into this. And I'm like, I'm into this, guys. Come out and watch. <laughs> so well, it's like, yeah. Which school do you go to? Um, I go to John Gray. Oh, you know, John Clark is probably clapping right now. Yeah. Yeah. John Gray High School. Yeah, that's that, right. is, that is my student. <laughs> you know, that is one engaged principal. I can tell you the truth. He listens on a daily basis and always praises his, mm -hmm. his youngsters as much as possible. How long have you been practicing for this play? Mm. Oh, let's What's be that? honest. About from August. Yeah. Really? Yes. I mean, not, not full rehearsals, but in terms of character development, meeting right. the cast. It's been a long journey. Wow. And it's because uh, Mr. Matu wants to get the actors to that place where what you're seeing is what is true yeah. and what is believable. 
because yeah. then will it move the audience? Yeah, because you, you, you can feel what each other mm -hmm. does and you, you understand the mannerisms of the next yeah. one and when your cues are and how it just feels yeah. instead of just kind of being, you know, robotic yes. kind, of a, <laughs> kind of a scenario. And, you know, Leslie, I just kind of wondering why did you choose, because you're such a great actor, why would you choose <laughs> you. to go in the back? <laughs> and do because I, when I read the thing, you know, because uh, uh, I know you as an actor, and then you also go slash yeah. stage manager. Like, how the heck is she doing that? Because I've watched live plays, yeah, and I'm wondering with all the stuff that Mr. Matu does, I, I it's like you're an octopus. <laughs> well, the thing is, um, I was asked to be stage manager, and I've never really been a stage manager. As you know, I've always been on stage. Um, but let me tell you something, being a stage manager, what I've learned is that you're not in the back. <laughs> it seems like the back because you're not on stage, but really it's leading. Yes. Right? Yeah, it's really, it's really being a part of, um, of the show in a way that the audience won't see, but it will, it's definitely felt. Mm -hmm. And I've appreciated the experience because, you know, sometimes, well, you know, you learn best when you take a step back. That's right. You know, I'm learning not only from Mr. Matu in terms of his directing abilities, but I'm seeing the play and how the, the characters are being shaped and developed and and it's things that i can use in whatever next performance that i undertake um let me tell you i'm very jealous sometimes and secretly i'm hoping that a couple of people <laughs> get are sick, sick. <laughs> <laughs> i've learned the line oh yeah but i mean but it's really a good experience you know not being on stage um do i want to do this forever as that no i love the stage too much i, I can't yeah. you know but it's definitely a great experience that i'm I'm happy I took on. Well, I'm glad that you're expanding, expanding your, your, yes, yeah, definitely. Your, your mind and your role. And, you know, Lily, kind of curious, what are your hopes and dreams and passions? You're 13 years old. What would you like to be? I know this is a cliche kind of a, yeah. uh, a question that most people ask, but where do you see yourself? Obviously, you want to go to university or do you just yeah. want to go off right after school and go, you know what? I am so good. I just want to go and be in the movies. <laughs> what What is the plan of action for you? Mm, well, obviously, after high school, I really want to go to university. Brilliant. I don't know. That's just a must for me. Good. So I guess, like, after university, I might apply for, like, some, like, audition for some movies. Because, like, that has been a dream of mine. I even wanted to move to the U.S. Like, early, when I think I was in year eight, mm. I wanted to move to the U.S. because, like, I have some relatives there. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to move to the U.S. so that I can get more, like, opportunities. But Miss Bernard told me that it's more competitive there. Yeah. So I guess, like, <clears throat> sorry, it's a good start here. Build like, yourself. yeah, yeah to build myself up to, like, learn new skills. So I guess, like, when I grow up, I don't, I do see myself in, like, theater. Okay. But I don't really see myself as, like, a full-time job. Hmm. I don't know. I just, I just don't really see it as stable. But yes, it's a passion, so I will keep on doing it till I'm old. Well, there's an old cliche, starving <laughs> artist, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like, I don't, yeah, I don't really see myself in theater. I mostly see myself in accounting for some reason. Oh, <laughs> yeah. well, but yeah. I don't really see myself. If you make enough money in accounting, you can, you, you can, can do actually do it. Want to, tell you, yeah. <laughs> you can retire young and early. Yeah. But ladies, before we leave, lastly, one more time, or maybe Lily, you did such a fantastic job. When, where, and how much? Okay, so, um... The, it takes place in the Harcourt Theater. Opening night is, oh my gosh, Thursday next week. We ha, we're we showing it every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of November. Um, times, Miss Bernard. 8 p.m. <laughs> um, but in case you want to know where to get your tickets from, they're at yes. Foster's Airport and Strand, Funky Tangs and Healthcare Grand Harbor. And you can also buy them online at artscayman.org. I'm going to have to shout out to the sponsors, right? Because, you know, Almost they pay definitely. the bills. So definitely big up Butterfield and the Cayman National Cultural Foundation. So if okay. you need more information or just information on how to get tickets, you can call 949-5477. Excellent. I have enjoyed my day and I can't wait to see, yeah. you know, your first main stage performance, Lily. Thank you. And um, I hope, I know the stage manager and, and Mr. Matugo, he can't have any you know, photographer or any kind of videos, but I hope your parents actually just take a little snip it out and, you know, say, this was your first time, you know? And then I know you probably can't even put it on YouTube because they're probably censored things. Yeah, and go, yeah. oh, you know, copyright laws and whatnot. But I sincerely wish you all the best. And thank you very much. Thank uh, you so Ms. much Leslie, for having for us. Identifying another great young talent. Yeah. 
and, you know, promoting them and pushing them and expanding their horizons. As a teacher, just want to say thank you very much for all of those things that you all do that a lot of people don't see. Yeah. But sincerely, thank thank you. And Godspeed to both of you. And I'm looking forward to seeing your play, to be honest with you. And ladies and gentlemen, right after, we're going to have the barrister coming in. We're going to ask some of the questions that have been posed on our social media. And that is, can politicians be prosecuted for acting in bad faith, even without the standards in public life law on their foot? That, along with gambling, what are your thoughts? And is it fair that cruise ships, if the birthing goes through, can gamble in port? But you can't gamble here. This hour of Game Man Crosstalk is powered by Subway. Subway, with six locations across Game Man, you know it makes sense to choose Subway. Subway, eat fresh, eat delicious. More of Game Man Crosstalk is next on Rooster 101 and simulcast live on Game Man 27. Sometimes having a middleman is not a bad thing, especially when it comes to insurance. Do you know that when it comes to cost, ease, speed, and peace of mind, insurance brokers ranked higher than when customers buy direct? So, for all your insurance needs, call Fidelity Insurance. We're the middleman you want. Call us today at 949-7822. Fidelity, we're good for you. Whether you want to get going in a new car, to relax at home while you pay bills on your mobile banking app, to get the best rewards with your credit card, or to get a sure start on your little one's future. Whether you want a quick response on your loan, or just a range of services that keep your business running smoothly, you want banking that fits your life. CIBC First Caribbean. Banking that fits your life. Watch as global adventurer and filmmaker Marlon Dara journeys across the world's most beautiful countries and cities. You'll explore breathtaking landmarks, art and architecture from the Caribbean, Europe, Central and South America, and so much more. Immerse yourself in the local culture, history and beauty as you follow his endless journeys of adventure every weekday, only on Cayman 27. It's a beautiful planet, and right now you can see it right here on Cayman 27. In this series, we'll travel to some of the most fascinating places as we explore the UNESCO heritage sites found around the world. From Stonehenge to the Grand Canyon, there are thousands of sites that will leave you in awe. Beautiful Planet is a series that will take a closer look into these wonders of the world. Join us to witness this beautiful planet. And thank you all very much for tuning in. And here is your weather forecast for today. Today, you're going to have a high of 84 with the real fuel temperature about 96 degrees. They say you're going to have about a 20% chance of experiencing some showers tonight. It's going to be partly sunny and pleasant. That is actually on my forecast this morning. Winds are going to be very softly coming at you at six miles per hour with an occasional gust at about eight. And it's even going to get a little bit more still tonight. That means it's going to be a little warm night. The winds are going to drop down as low as five miles per hour coming still from that east-northeast. So it's going to be a very, very still night tonight. That's going to translate to 81 degrees on your thermostat. But on your body thermostat, the real fuel temperature, they say the heat index may indicate about 90 degrees tonight. You're going to have a 20% chance, once again, of experiencing some showers. But tonight is going to be mainly clear. Your sunrise this morning was at 623. Your sunset will be at 556. You got 11 hours and 33 minutes of beautiful tropical sun to enjoy. And you got a similar weather forecast pattern straight through until Saturday morning. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say to Felicity, yes, Felicity, she told me that's how I got to say her name, and Sandra and Bernice, all from L.A. L.A., yes, thank you all very much. And for the girls weekend away in the Cayman Islands, welcome to the Cayman Islands, and I hope you're enjoying yourself. Be a part of the conversation on K-Man Crosstalk by calling the Superior Auto Hotline, 233-1019. Or message us on the K-Man Crosstalk Facebook page. Now, back to K-Man Crosstalk on Rooster 101 and simulcast live on K-Man 27. 
Hey, ladies and gentlemen, and happy Wednesday to all of you. And thank you all very much for tuning in. Let us be part of your morning, part of your day. And I am joined this morning with a conversation right now. I have Barrister at Law, Dr. Steve McPhee, and I also have the Honorable Gilbert McLean as well. This is their Civic Wednesdays. Every last Wednesday of the month, we usually have these gentlemen come in talking about a plethora of various different things, especially educating you all on your constitution and constitutional rights and some historic content as well which we want all of you to appreciate this beautiful little island, our beloved Isle Cayman, as much as we certainly do. And for those of you that need to take tests, maybe it can help you <laughs> as well. Um, gentlemen, thank you very much for coming in again. I greatly, greatly appreciate it and greatly um, appreciate the, the time that both of you dedicate to prepping and so forth for this. Here are some of the questions, gentlemen, that have been coming through. One Maybe we can get the, the first one out of the way very quickly. It, it has to do with, and I know, Gilbert, this might be down your wheelhouse, and then we'll get into the second one. Um, a question that came in, Dr. McPhee, was that with the recent changing of the laws last year, I believe, when it came to gaming and so forth for the shipping registry, and I guess in anticipation if there was going to be a cruise berthing facility, that it was a going to allow basically vessels, which are floating casinos and floating cities, to come and really be right next to terra firma and gamble. The question that came in, and I'd never thought about it before, to be honest with you, but it got me thinking. So what do you keep talking about Section 19, Administrative Law, where that there should be as government should guarantee as a level playing field as possible and all things so that people can make a start of it, whatever energies they put into it, they can try to get out equally. And Section 19, sir, basically is saying everything must be done fairly, rationally, proportionally, and lawfully. Proportionately is, to me, I think is a key kicker of it all. And they're asking, well, if that is possible, if the cruise berthing does go through, and these vessels are allowed to dock alongside the, the island, well, then shouldn't a hotel or even a local or someone apply for a license on their proportionality and say, well, if they're allowing for that practice to happen, shouldn't we? Well, I don't know if there's legality in allowing the cruise ships who docks up in Cayman, um, dock, in a dock in Cayman to, to, to gamble. As far as I know, the gambling law does not permit gambling within the Cayman Islands, and that would be within the three-mile limit that, that, the, that the laws in Cayman applies. And that brings me to um, to the knowledge of a, a ship that was bought by a Caymanian, um, and it was anchored in, in um, Governor's Harbor. And my understanding of it, that's the story that I have been told, that it was brought here, um, it was brought by a Caymanian, and it was given to a politician or, or a person who was in politics then um, with, the, uh, with, the, with the idea that if that person got elected, that they would get a license to allow them to gamble within the three-mile limit of Cayman Islands. Well, that person got elected, never got the license for the owner of the ship. The ship was in Governor's Harbor, anchored for a long time, and people went on to the ship and stole most of the uh, artifacts off it. And the owner was ordered by the cabinet to tow the ship away. Um, and, and, and the ship is now in, in, in the marina, um, uh, in the marina in storage. And um, because it became a, 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 a navigational hazard in the governor's harbor. So from that story, you can see that the, the whole gambling law in Cayman would have to be changed to allow a cruise ship docking up in, in, in a dock in Georgetown or 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 prospect or 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 South Sound to be able to gamble on board. Um so I think that is I think I don't I don't know how the church would um the church people would 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 um would would react to to a gambling to allow a ship a ship to gamble because if that was so they would have to be a, another a, a, also a provision of the law that Caymanians could not go aboard the ship to gamble because if Caymanians would be going aboard a ship to gamble that would be Father, um, um, 
e erosion of 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 the of the of the principles in which gambling is not permitted in Cayman. Mr. Clean, Mr. <clears throat> Clean, I do not. I I uh, Woody. Uh, first of all, thanks uh, for the invitation, mm -hmm. and uh, good morning to you and your listeners. Uh, the, the the question of gambling, Woody. I I think there is too much hypocrisy mm -hmm. surrounding it because. You know, as I do, that the government, uh, well, an extension of the last government, they amended the gambling law. And they, I think they just barely increased the, uh, the amount of penalty uh, for gambling, which used to be 10 pounds. Yeah, so and like 150 bucks now. It's 150. I think so. Yeah, $150 what, what a, what a, yeah, $150. What a, what a, a shattering number, yeah? And uh, the that's an hour's the, salary for for any prosecutor. Yes, and, and, and not not even a licensed one. That's a legal aid. <laughs> that's a legal aid. A legal aid salary. Oh, that it, was just saying it's a clerk. Incredible. <laughs> yes. And of course, yeah. the the thing about it is that they amended it so that the churches can gamble, the the churches can hold <clears throat> uh, raffles, raffles and all of those things, which is gambling. Yeah. Now, if the government is of a mind, and if the churches is an entity of a mind that they can accept such a thing, the change of the gambling law so they can gamble, then why shouldn't it be that controlled by law, people can play games of chance? I have advocated it, uh, Woody, and uh, I have advocated a, a lottery here in Cape Man. And interestingly enough, just before we came in here, we someone told us that someone in California hit that big lottery last night uh south carolina yeah south carolina yeah okay i mean uh, billions billion uh billion dollars you know yeah it, it, it it's incredible and of course woody every single day people are playing what is called the numbers in cayman and those numbers add up people are playing it i remember way back now getting more like 15 years of commissioner of police said in the finance committee that while they didn't have actual numbers, they estimated that the lottery or the numbers game in Cayman amounted to about a million dollars a week. And if the year still has 52 weeks, that's 500 and uh, 52 million dollars a year, you know. So I don't believe in the the stuff that goes on here now and the hypocrisy that's played out where supposedly the government is is catering to the our Christian values. People always gamble. From the time I was a young guy, I used to remember hearing of the big games in Georgetown. I knew some people who used to play in in the Georgetown area, the gambling through the night, including People who were of substance who used to be involved in and it. And were Christian people too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, for, for the, the ships, I wouldn't let the, the ships gamble in, in Cayman because make them go to sea and gamble. And their, <clears throat> their main thrust and desire is to gamble. And there's hundreds and thousands of people on board the ship and they gamble and they make a lot of money from it. You know, if, if, if they're like I, I know in, in Puerto Rico it was that way. Ships overnighted there, but you you went in the, the casinos in Puerto Rico to gamble. You didn't gamble on board the ship, you know. So it's it uh, as usual here in Cayman. We we make a mountain out of a molehill, and suddenly at some point in time something happens and poof, <clears> it's <throat> gone. It has happened, well, and you say, well, what was all the fuss yeah, about? What was all that about? You know, gentlemen, I got to go and take a break right now. But doctor, before we leave. I wouldn't mind coming back and just touching on this just briefly. And for the hearing of most people, I want to to read the Gambling Law 2016 revision and it's section 2A, subsection B, says, Raffles staged by churches, service organizations, or other voluntary uh, associations to raise funds for programs of respective churches, organizations, and associations. Now, in the context of Section 19, I submit that is not fair, rational, nor proportionate in any capacity whatsoever. And therefore, to use the phraseology, 
of Mr. McLean. It's total hypocrisy and should not be adjusted based on Section 19 of the Constitution, sir. Be right back after this little short news break. The opinions expressed by K-Man Crosstalk, its hosts, callers, or guests are not those of Hurley's Media or its sponsors. Now, from the K-Man 27 News Team, here are your latest news headlines brought to you by the Cayman Pharmacy Group with West Bay Pharmacy, Savannah Pharmacy, and Professional Pharmacy. The Cayman Pharmacy Group has a location for you just around the corner. Visit them today. Now, here's your news headlines. Another visitor drowns in Cayman. What's up, everyone? I'm Doug Dodds. Here's today's top stories from the Cayman 27 newsroom. A male visitor dies in Cayman's 12th water-related death of the year. Police have yet to release the identity of the victim, but they say the incident happened on Tuesday around 1045 in the morning at Georgetown's waterfront where the man was snorkeling and encountered difficulties. In other news today, the Bodtown Quarry Fire that smoldered for three weeks is extinguished, but residents in the vicinity of the long-burning fire say a government information Services press release downplays the severity of the toxic smoke that they say they experienced. Fire services said due to the remote location of the quarry, there was never really a risk to the surrounding neighborhood. The fire was extinguished last Thursday. Came out 27 reached out to fire services to clarify what tests were being done to ensure that the smoke was, in fact, not toxic as they claim, but we did not hear back. And finally today, police are searching for a man who they say assaulted a woman in Sunday in West Bay. Police say emergency services were dispatched to a West Bay location following a 911 call to investigate reports that a woman was attacked by a man she knew who was armed with a knife. The man was not on scene when police officers arrived. For more news on these stories and others, click on kman27.ky or watch the news tonight at 6 with a replay at 7. For Hurley's Media, I'm Doug Dodds. Have a great day. Be a part of the conversation on K-Man Crosstalk by calling the Superior Auto Hotline, 233-1019. Or message us on the K-Man Crosstalk Facebook page. Now, back to K-Man Crosstalk on Rooster 101 and Simulcast Live on K-Man 27. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very much, and happy Wednesday to all of you. And if you're just tuning in right now, I have two fine gentlemen in the studios with us for our Civic Wednesdays. Mm-hmm. I have Dr. <clears throat> Steve McPhee, barrister at law, over 40 years of experience and, and various many different things. Um, gentlemen that... I consider one of my mentors as well, and another mentor of mine, uh, Mr. Honorable Gilbert McLean, and been everything from a school teacher, chief officer, um, chief, you did every, everything, a commissioner Cameron Brock. I mean, the man did it all, MLA for Cameron Brock, I for k uh, um, <laughs> I Honestly, you got one of the most storied <laughs> political careers I've ever looked on in the Cayman Islands. And we have these two fine gentlemen in the studios this morning. And we're talking about a couple of things that have been hitting our social media a great deal, gentlemen. It's about gambling and then also about could politicians. The second question that really has been dominating, you brought the, the issue up and actually came from you. Someone was listening to you and actually five different people posted this question, which I felt if five people are doing it like that, and asking the same things of public and standard um, standards in public life, and you keep calling, you keep calling politicians, you keep calling the show, and you keep talking about it. And they were like, well, are they above the law? And so that's some of the questions that we're going to ask. Could politicians be prosecuted and for acting in bad faith, even without the standards in public life? That's the second question. But the first question is about gambling in the Cayman Islands, mm-hmm. about fair, and rational, and proportionate treatment. And I read earlier you know, the application of the gambling law, raffles. And if I, if I may, to give some context to the listeners and so forth of this nature, tell me, good doctor, where there is a distinct definition between these two things. Because for the average person, lay person that's reading it, it's hard to, to decipher. A lottery ticket includes any paper, figure, or writing symbol or other article whatsoever which either expressly or tacitly entitles or purports to entitle the holder or any other person to receive any money or any money's worth on the happening of any event or contingency connected to with any public lottery. Okay? 
other churches can. And here's the raffle definition. A raffle means a sale of numbered tickets, one or more of which is drawn at random for the awarding of a prize. And then let's just go what gambling to them is. Gambling means to play at any game, whether of skill or chance, for money or money's worth. Now, I, I got to ask your brilliant legal mind, could you please tell me the difference really between a lottery ticket and a raffle ticket? Because both of them are labeled. Both of them give you utterances and, 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 and basically entitles you, tacitly entitles you to either money or goods. But both of them are a game of ch game, are games of chances. Thank you. But they're all the same. Yeah. I mean, when, when you buy a lottery ticket... Hoping to get when you buy a when you buy a a, a, t a ticket from the church or some organization or charity organization and the ticket is going to is and the ticket is going to is you you have a chance to 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 win a a, a a ticket to New York for you or your wife or your children that's a game of chance that's a game of chance because you you're in a game with with maybe a, a thousand other people that's mm -hmm. the game of that's gambling. That's what gambling. <laughs> that's what. So, that's what it is. So why is it that we are so hypocrit so hypocritical? Because churches, service organizations, and voluntary organizations can gamble to raise monies for themselves. Why can't why can't uh, why can't other gaming institutions be done? I mean, you you have to be a service organization or other voluntary organizations. Mm -hmm. That's what the law says. Mm -hmm. Churches is the first thing. Now, I submit to you, good doctor, you tell me if I'm fair in, in saying this. Mm -hmm. If churches were such a, so against it, one, they should never participate in a raffle, which it's not unreasonable to say that they do. But if churches were so against it, don't you think under the consultation of this law, which goes out 21 days for consultation, they would have said remove. The minister's association would have, gotten up and said, remove churches from this because what it is, yeah. it's going against our very principles, our core values of this. Remove us from this whole entire element. We will be just like any other general citizen. Would not be fair to say. That would be fair to say, but it's, yeah. but it's our fault to a degree. It's our fault to a degree, to a degree because we have, we have been miseducated and also we have been misinformed about gambling and about many other things in this society. It's us, the people... It's not the politicians and the churches mostly. It's us. It's the it's the whole populace. I don't hear anybody um and calling the radio station about it and up in the arms about it. I don't hear um uh, people who are Christ Christians in the church saying that 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 provision is wrong and that they are not supporting it. They're supporting it, and they and yet they're worshiping every day and saying that 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 is that that is that is a sin to to gamble, and and it's a sin for you to go. To a casino and, and and play blackjack or to play twenty one, that's what they're saying. It's hip, it's it's not only uh, pull hypocr that little lever. It's, it's not only <laughs> hip, hypocritical. It's really miseducational. And the problem is you that, think it's miseducation yeah, or just it misleading. It, it's 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 said mised. If we were educated to all those things, um, to all those things to, to a degree, we 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 would not we would there would be a national debate about them, or we would be up in arms about them, or we would be accept them mm -hmm. one way on what we would be we, we would not be sitting on the we would not be sitting on the fence we would be on one side of the fence or other either for or against but i'll be honest with you i submit to you and i say this with the greatest of respect that i have for you i believe that the people are much more intelligent than that they're just not engaged well i don't I, think I, that I, we're that uneducated that we don't know the difference between uh because Let's just be frank. It, it's it's not it's that's not the kind of education I'm talking I about. I understand that education, lawful education, I'm about, I'm and I'm, administrative I'm application. Education that evoked the conscience to to know what's exactly. right and real and what's moral and what's immoral. Well, that's the that's thing. That's the kind of education yeah. I'm talking about. But that's the thing. That's the that's the thing. It's not unreasonable for me to say that a fair amount of people. And you said it, Mr. McLean, in your time in cabinet. I know you're not declaring no national secrets here. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's a fact. We've had people prosecuted uh, for a long period of time and slapped on the wrist because, frankly, it is a joke. See what you, if you were found in a gaming house, it's only like a couple of hundred dollars mm -hmm. that you're going to be prosecuted for. It's just a joke. 
Having said that, you said, you know, even when you were in cabinet for, uh, you know, some time back, at that particular point per, per week, it was at a very minimum that people were transacting in what we call numbers, <coughs> lottery tickets. Million dollars a week. Uh -huh. and, and, you know, back then, when I was younger, we had really one lottery. And that was the, the Honduran one, I believe it was, where it drew like once a day. And, and then on the weekend, you had that but, extra. But, but I don't know that's how it's operating now here in Cayman. That's one of the Jamaican one does like three times a day. Yeah, there's four. Yeah. And so I, when, when I look at the hypocrisy of all of this stuff and then allowing institutions to gamble, to have casino nights, to have all kind of things that if you enter to win something, you're going to get a prize from it. It's out and open. Yeah. But yet the small man and woman down in Church Street, um, Town Hall Road, West Bay, gets prosecuted for gambling. I don't understand the hypocrisy of this, sir. And I would submit that the application of the law, especially constitutional application of the law, is disproportionate and therefore is a breach of one's human right. Well, what people should do, they should test it. Somebody should open a gambling casino and invite people to come. Gilbert. And if they and if they come, do it. Somebody <laughs> should, somebody if should, I had the money, I would. Somebody should open a gambling casino and invite people to come. Or somebody should put up a a, a national lottery, and 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 ask people to subscribe to it and see what the government does about it. That's a, that's one way of testing the law and testing the 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 um, the morality and 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 the and the and the and the um and the and the information that 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 people are seeking. You see, to me, we talk about a lot of things and came on, but we don't do anything about them. We don't test test well, anything. It's the same thing that you were talking about politicians. We. No one has taken a politician to court or had challenged him in a court of law or or in any or in a formal institutions. We get up and we shoo shoo. Oh, we say Mr. So and so and so. For instance, I see the editorial this morning about Harris and and Bush going to to London, mm -hmm. and the editorial is very scathing, sc mm -hmm. scathing about them. And the educate and the editorial say, well, all that money they're spending to go to England to learn about the, the park committee, or the the, the, the public accounts, the public accounts committee. committee. They could have gotten that from McKeever Bush, or they could have gotten well, that from Mr. Ezra ha Miller Harris and, 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 on a trip to Northside. But Harris went away before to you learn see? about being a whip of, you, you of twelve see? people. You see, you see. So <laughs> twelve so people. I don't see anybody. I don't see. Any, I don't see any. I don't see the. Joke. I don't see the electorates up in arms about anything like that. It's 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 see. It's raised, in, it's raised on radio shows like this, and it's raised in the, in the newspaper, and that's the end of it, really. I think it's socially and, and morally wrong to allow the, a situation where the church, which is supposedly the watchdog of our morality and so on, to be able to gamble while the rest of us have no access to doing so. Also, I think it is wrong and it is foolish to allow individuals to control a whole sub-economy in Cayman where they earn thousands of dollars every day and the government not legalize the process by which you can hold a lottery and the monies which come in there Government allocate them for education. I've always said it: education, health care, and social services. I I firmly believe that, and I think it should be done. And all of the stories that I hear from this government and those of the past about our Christian heritage and so on, Christians will, must uh, make their way like everybody else in the country and do what they believe is right. It's just like drinking alcohol. Some people want to drink it, others don't. Each have the right to do it, and the same thing comes in where I believe it comes to gambling. Well, here's this laughable joke, um, good doctor. I'm going to read to you hearing and everyone's hearing. It says, a person who, possess, who is in possession of a lottery ticket is found shall be presumed until the contrary proved and have been bought at the same time. However, subsection 6.1 says, a person who either or personal or by agent pays or deposits on any money or any money's worth to what a person is concerned in the business of gaming house as a stake or for that in respect of any event contingency connected with a public lottery or buys a lottery ticket. Get this one, Gilbert. 
commits an offense and is liable on conviction of a fine of $10 or imprisonment with or without hard labor. Like, you going to make a prisoner do hard labor in Cayman for two months. Come on! What a joke is this? <laughs> yes, well, Come on! We well, don't have any such thing as hard labor anymore, no, do we, no, uh, Steve? <laughs> no, no, we don't have hard labor. That, that's cruel and unusual punishment. Yes, yes. <laughs> but yes. but, you, but you, 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 have, you have to look at... You have to, you have to look at the... At, at the... Um, at, at, at the government and, and, and what they are capable of doing. You see, when you talk about government in, 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 in the sense that, that in, in political science and, and, in, and in constitutional law, government, government, government is, is an organization that, 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 that are either elected or by dictatorship or, 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 some, or some, some, some form of political or, or, or social or economic force that runs the country. I don't think that we really have a, a government well, I think what we have is a is a conglomerate of personalities who get together in caucus and decide what they are going to do. It's not it's it's not it's it's not unusual on behalf of all the people. It's on behalf of them what they think that is best for the people. Let me give an example of what you're talking we'll be talking about. I'm coming down this morning, and we have a beautiful roadway. I would say after you pass Savannah, coming down. Mm -hmm. You have a two-lane highway coming all over down, and you have a place, the beautiful roads called the Linford Pearson Highway. And then when you get past um, um, the, the road that goes off to Rogelio's gas station. Not to Jose's. Jose's. Who says, <clears throat> yeah. who says yeah, Linhurst. Who says yeah. Linhurst. Or Linhurst. Yeah. The road comes to an end and, and, and stops. Why yeah. is the road stopped? Have you ever thought about why the road stopped? I, I know why it's stopped. It's stopped because you have one family who owns land. And put an injunction. And against, they have an injunction understand. against the government from 2001. But wasn't that a historic overlay on that property? See, this is why I don't understand. So, 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 whether it's a historical overlay or not, but who brought the, the, the road injunction? is for a national, it's, it's for a public issue, public use. It's a national use. And here is one people, one family, one, one business can call up the whole country. Thousands and thousands of people moving back and forth there every day. But it shows that and the government cannot do anything about it. And even when the government has, even the government has its own laws that they pass in the legislature, in the, that the majority of the people elected them to pass in the legislature is called the, the law of eminent domain. You know what that means? Yeah. That the government can take land compulsory for a public use. Yeah. Well, I tell and, they, you. and the government refused to do it because the government seems to do not want to offend this family and their business. You know, and and that, I, I, I resent that every morning I come down. One. You're not the only one. Because I tell because you the had, truth. Had it been my business, had it been my land, the government would have gone in there and taken yes. my land and they would have gotten uh, an assessment of the value of my land. And if I didn't want to take the money, they would have put in a bank account in some bank in my name. Well, well you know, you're absolutely right because I resent it as well because... I resent uh, that. My my father, my uncle, and your 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 friend, under their company, years ago, acquired all of that land where the community college or UCCI is sitting on. That was their property. That was taken by eminent domain mm. and devalued so low at the end of the day, and to your point, they couldn't even fight it. Years in the courts and took it away from them. And this is what ticks me off. One person, because of influence, can actually make a whole lot of things done. We got a line jam pack, 233-1019. I promise each one of you, when we come right back after this short break, we're going to get to the phone lines. 233-1019 is brought to you by wonderful friends of Superior Auto. More of Gay Man Crosstalk on Rooster 101 and live on Gay Man 27 is next. Like finding money in an old pair of jeans? Mm-hmm. Or ditching work. A timely response, that matters. Owning your own home, that matters. Supporting our community, that matters. When your child smiles, that matters. Good encounters, great experiences. It matters at Cayman National. Eclipse Hair Design and Day Spa presents Beautiful You every second and last Thursday of the month. The beauty experts will draw from experience and share tips for personal beauty care, 
how to have healthy hair and glowing skin, flawless makeup application, and the latest trends and style tips. Watch Cayman 27 every second and last Thursday of the month for Beautiful You. Brought to you by Eclipse Hair Design and Day Spa. Lunch lady of the past and lunch lady of the future. We're dyeing our hair. Yeah, now move it, George. I need the sun to cook the juices, and your head's making an eclipse. <laughs> I smell barbecue and hair. You must be done. What color are you dyeing your hair? We're putting red streaks in it. Mom, can you talk to me before you start painting my kids? <laughs> Remember when you were 13 and you shaved your head? Now we're even. Come on. Here we go, baby. Work with me. Oh, well, okay. Okay. Ah. Uh, on. Hey, what, you like your keys in your car? No, I have a shirt in the back. I'm trying to get on the hanger without opening the door. <laughs> so, trying to help out. Moron. <laughs> Simulcast live on K-Man 27. More of K-Man Crosstalk on Rooster 101 and live on K-Man 27 is next. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very much for tuning in. Letting us be part of your morning and part today. I'm joined by Barrister at Law, Dr. Steve McField, and also the Honorable Gilbert McLean. And we're talking about, you know, right now, the gambling law and so forth and the hypocrisy that it is and the joke that the law is. And the, call, the number in the studios is 233-1019, 233-1019. And that is sponsored by our wonderful friends at Superior Auto. The lines were lit just now. Hello? Hello, 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 hello caller. Hello, hello. Could you please turn on your device? Hello? Hi, good morning, caller. How are you? Hello, Mr. Woody. How are you? I'm very good, sir. Thank you very much for hello, your call. Hello, Dr. McField and Brother Gil. How are they doing? Very good. I am good. doing well, yes, thank sir. you. The gambling law. I was a bailiff for the court, and I used to auction air, auction off things for dormant. Isn't that isn't that gambling too? Because I mean, I know you get it, but you all you all read it out. Yes, now what 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 gambling mean? Anything from exchange of money? Isn't that correct? No, that no, correct? no. That's that is that, no, that that's is a game of chance. That's not a that's not a game of chance. That is that is something that's sold by order of the court. So that's completely different from the game of chance. Yeah, you're not oh, spending at oh. random. You're just yes. hoping. You're hoping that um, I don't outbid you. Yes, <laughs> that's the only. It may be okay. chance, but yes. sometimes people oh, yeah. do have a price. Oh, okay, what what happened? You know, you're you're saying about the the lottery. I was one of the founding members that uh, people that brought that lottery came on from 1969. I brought it here, the Honduras lottery and the Belize lottery. The uh, Honduras lottery only plays on Sunday at 12 o'clock. And uh, they used to play 10 years ago, 10 o'clock in the morning, but they plays at 12 now. The Belize lottery, which is called the Bolido, that plays every night. I used to go down in, to the public building in Belize when some years ago I used to live there. And every night at 9 o'clock, I would inform the Caymanian people about it, I know. Some people in Cayman right now, the old ones that brought it from Honduras, but again, but you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> and she is 96 years old right now. <laughs> and I see the churches, they sell tickets for cake sales and stuff like that. Isn't that a part of gambling as well? Yes. Yes, it is. It is. Sure. The game so of chance. The problem well is, well, the thing so with it is, is the problem? that they, they, but here's the thing, here's the hypocrisy of it all. <clears throat> and I'm just going to call it out, and it just happened. I've been to a Ministry of Tourism district meeting, and they were kind enough to, to have a raffle for a ticket on Cayman Airways, I'm, wherever destination was going, but that was part of your attendance. You were given a ticket, put your name in a, in a pot, and at the end of the night, Tickets were raffled off and somebody won a ticket. Now, I submit to you, good doctor, that is no voluntary organization. I submit to you, that is no church. So 
if the government is doing it right out in the open, right on, on in public property, in a public structure, is not an offense. But it's only fineable by ten dollars. <laughs> but because I, 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 I'm seeing right now in Miami, I, I was watching up the last night, some trillion dollars. It is, and people is coming from all parts of the state, coming down to Florida and buying lottery tickets because it helps the country. And Cayman need a lot of help, so I don't see why we couldn't um, get it here. Well, um, that is something I think um, all of you as, as electors maybe should petition. You know, candidates are coming up a little bit more engaged now as small electorates that are there. Maybe that's something, and you see this dovetails into what a good doctor has been saying. If you had district councils, yes, then you can bring that to the district council. The district council then would bring that to the, to the MLA, and they can see whether or not it is a, a pulse uh, matter or whether or not it's dead on arrival. And it would make that much more easier. And talking about uh, participatory democracy, well, that would be it in its, in its nutshell. Wouldn't it be, Doctor? Hey, of course. Mr. Mr. Woody, one more thing before I go. I, like I said, I, 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 I brought that. I used to spend that here a lot. And when I was the bailiff for the court, the judges used to tell me what numbers to buy. They themselves, some that I worked with used to buy it. You know? And they always told me they don't know why the government didn't pass the law to make a national lottery. So people that we think that don't buy it, like politicians, they buy it as well. They buy it as well. Of course and, they do. And, you know, they run up and down and you hustle the people and you arrest the people. So much paperwork to take the person to court just for $10. It really don't add up it to me. It really don't make sense. But I, I don't know why they're fighting against a national lottery here. And the same they're fighting against it. If they don't buy it here... They go in by it. Well, I, I'm not, not going to lie to no one. I got me a, I got me a Mega Millions and I got me a Powerball ticket. <laughs> but I remember, uh, so, sorry, I remember when I was young. Um, I used to go out and buy the Irish lottery for my family. I can't, uh, I, I, I can't remember who used to sell. I think, I, I, if I can remember, it was sold by some. Of the, some of the tickets were sold by a man called Mr. Hilton, um, Conrad Hilton. Mm -hmm. um, out on out on the babies to call it go out there by the Irish lottery, and we used to sit and wait till the horse race was run to see which 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 um, number was 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 the winning number. And I think the the Irish lottery in those days was like five shillings for a ticket or two shillings a sequence for a ticket, and people would go around with books of them. And mm -hmm. the thing the thing about the thing that that people were were faring is that they were selling the people they were buying the Irish lottery. But people were not sending the tickets to Ireland, and we're keeping the money. Yes. And, I, and I think that's the reason why that fell through. But I remember when the Irish lottery was up and running and came on, and you could go and buy the, the five the five shilling tickets or two two and sixpence tickets for it. But it's it's some um, it's it's uh, it's something that they came on and they came on and people have accepted, and it's for them, it's for us to say whether we want it or not. Not it's not the politicians or the church. It's for us to say whether we want it or not. But we don't say much. And uh, we leave it to somebody else to do, to our grave as, as, especially some, somebody from outside and who, who's rich and powerful will come in and we will do it. And then we'll bow down and kiss their feet and thank them for, 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 for putting in a lottery or, or a gambling casino. For, on, for, on our, on, and, and, and then we'll go around the world saying it's, it's belonged to us. That's, that's what we usually do. We got a uh, we got people on the line, but I'm asking you all two three three one zero one nine two three three one zero one nine. I got to go and take a break right now, but if you call that number and if you're there, I promise you'll be the first thing we get when we come back. Does this sound like your business moving along at a slow, predictable pace? Well, it's all your copper internet service can handle. Isn't it? Make the most of your morning at Burger King with Burger King's unbeatable breakfast special: two cr sandwiches for just four dollars. Take two bacon, egg, and cheese cr sandwiches, two sausage, egg, and cheese, or mix and match. Add a refreshing OJ or delicious hash browns, plus tea or coffee for a true breakfast of champions. Two cr sandwiches for just $4, available until 10.30 weekdays and 11 a.m. on weekends. Only at Burger King, Seven Mile Beach, Waterfront, Walker's Road, Town Center Plaza, and now Red Bay. 
Let Elite Marble and Granite bring the charm of Italy to your home. Made from only the best materials. Santa Margarita Quartz is handcrafted at a state-of-the-art facility located in Italy and then journeys across the ocean to Elite Marble and Granite, who is the exclusive distributor in the Caribbean. Elegant and resistant, Santa Margarita Quartz products offer a large choice of colors, textures, and exclusive finishes. Call 945-9028 or visit us online at Elite.ky. Elite Marble and Granite, where perfection costs less. I just need to know whose side are you on? This part's my favorite Batman really begins. just the most reliable energy service in the Caribbean. Whether it's for your entertainment, lighting a path to your future, or making sure that you and your family are secure. We're there for you when it matters most. Your safety and our reliability are our top priority. We are committed to remaining the number one utility service in the Caribbean. We are CUC. Drowns in Cayman. What's up, everyone? I'm Doug Dodds. Here's today's top stories from the Cayman 27 Newsroom. A male visitor dies in Cayman's 12th water-related death of the year. Police have yet to release the identity of the victim, but they say the incident happened on Tuesday around 1045 in the morning at Georgetown's waterfront, where the man was snorkeling and encountered difficulties. In other news today, the Bodentown Quarry Fire that smoldered for three weeks is extinguished, but residents in the vicinity of the long-burning fire say a government information services press release downplays the severity of the toxic smoke that they say they experienced. Fire services said due to the remote location of the quarry, there was never really a risk to the surrounding neighborhood. The fire was extinguished last Thursday. Came out 27 reached out to fire services to clarify what tests were being done to ensure that the smoke was, in fact, not toxic as they claim, but we did not hear back. And finally today, police are searching for a man who they say assaulted a woman in Sunday in West Bay. Police say emergency services were dispatched to a West Bay location following a 9 911 call to investigate reports that a woman was attacked by a man she knew who was armed with a knife. The man was not on scene when police officers arrived. For more news on these stories and others, click on kman27.ky or watch the news tonight at 6 with a replay at 7. For Hurley's Media, I'm Doug Dodds. Have a great day. Be a part of the conversation on Kman Crosstalk by calling the Superior Auto Hotline. 233-1019 or message us on the K-Man Crosstalk Facebook page. Now, back to K-Man Crosstalk on Rooster 101 and simulcast live on K-Man 27. He's in and at the end of the day. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very much for tuning in and letting us be part of your morning and part of your day. If you're just tuning in right now, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to let you know that I have two fine gentlemen on our Pacific Wednesdays to, to try to educate you into some of the laws of the land and, and what they're all about. We have Barrister at Law, Dr. Steve McField, 40 years plus in the legal uh, profession. In addition, I have one of the most storied um, histories of a politician there is in the Cayman Islands, the Honorable Gilbert McLean, who has been everything from a, te uh, a, a teacher right up to, what was that thing? I, I guess you would call it deputy governor because you would have probably been in that position um, if you stayed there at that particular time as well. And Commissioner Cameron Brack, and a Emily for Cameron Brack and Emily for came, um, Grant came on as well, or as the Cameron Brack said, came on. Um, these two gentlemen, fine gentlemen, are in studios, and we were touching on two questions that have been coming through on social media. One was about gambling, the, the, the hypocrisy that it is, and explaining that law to most people. In addition, the next question that is actually pretty dominant um, that we're going to be touching on right after this one, can politicians be prosecuted for acting in bad faith, even without the standards in public um, life um, law into effect. We're going to go straight to the phone lines. Good morning, caller. How are you this morning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a good morning. To good you, morning, sir. This morning. Good, good morning. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Mark Yes. Um, 
could I get your number off the air or give what my number may, what I give you because I need a, a an important question to ask you off the air when I want to ask you. Sure, yes. Mr. Marquis and Mr. Gilbert, when I've been around with my daddy and them and the ancestors, you see, we talk about this gambling, okay, right? The bars, the, 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 the license, liquor license, every gas thing going on, you get liquor, right? Yeah. Yeah, air so. gas station, you go to get liquor now, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. Okay, why, why air gas station? We can't go and get a, a lottery ticket. Well, you can. You can. You can. You can go by and fill up your yeah. car for $25 yes. and yes. have an opportunity to win $5,000, yes. yes. possibly a week, oh, or even $35,000. Okay, okay, Mr. Woody. Um, yeah. Years ago, you do. we signed up. Years ago, years ago, they signed up on, on a petition what go around for, for um, legal life gambling in the Cayman Island, right? And nothing happened. What Mr. Maxfield say? We came on here and we chat so much. And we do act. We free to protest. We, we we stay behind the corner and talk about Mr. Maxfield, talk about Mr. Gilbert, talk about Mr. Woody. But we not coming out and show our true colors. You, you see, you see where all the gambling money going, Mr. Woody? It's going out, out our country air a week and air a month and air a year. No, right. no gambling money stay in Cayman's Island. The government has sense. They could take that user for social service, road work, education. The nine yards, they take the screen, the, the screen off their hands and realize what they could benefit for the Cayman Islands. But the foreigners coming out here, breathing off on us and laughing at us in some our feelings, taking us off foot stool, and we're not doing anything. That's my little two cents for the day, uh, Mr. McFeel. I'd like to get your number. I need to talk to you about something I'll, I'll, serious. I'll, 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 I'll WhatsApp yeah. you his number. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll thank, you, I'll thank you for okay. that. I'll thank you for that, caller. I think you hit it right. You hit the nail right on the head. Um, I get to the point now where I don't know if the, if my voice means anything anymore because I have been preaching this now in the wilderness for over 60 years now. More than that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, and, sir, and, Mr. Buffy, I, I know. I know from the time they... They fight against you, or they see what your caller is. What what would they tell you? Your skin of your caller. If if you had, if you didn't have no heart, you you wouldn't be right there still. You would give up. But you's a fighter. You know what Hercules and them used to go to it. You, they they the train. But you know the law. You know you 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 know the law, and you you got common sense to see what happened now. We sitting down, we chatting about the gambling thing. But the churches could have the raffle. And, and 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 we can't have the gambling here. Every day gambling go on in Cayman's Island. The police won't go around. We need the gambling. And we got serious crime, more gambling happening in Cayman, right? And they're not trying to cut out the serious crime to when it gets to the politicians. Yeah, air country happening too, right? The police won't go around to the to these gambling players, arresting these men, wasting paperwork for $150. You can't charge them on $150. Man, I laugh at you. Money just go to court every day. That's a waste of time. Oh, yes, sure. It is. It is. It's... That's, that's, that's a waste of time. It's a mark field. It's it... time. It's, you use a lawyer's time. You drop a paperwork for $150. You know how much it came on government lose that day? You know how much it lose? Sure, because because if if I have to charge by the hour to go to court, it's cheaper for Thank him you. to just to go and pay one hundred fifty dollars. He doesn't need a lawyer to go to court Thank in you. a matter like that. And he, and yeah, he can't put you. into hard labor. Yes, yes, because it's cruel yes, and unusual yes, treatment. And and the anyway, rate, guys, keep up right. the good work. And Thank you. God continue to bless on the family. You no. Know? Thank you. Talk to you later. All right. Thank you, caller. Here's another caller in line. Hello, caller. How are you? Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning caller. <clears throat> Interesting subject. I keep popping the head up in Cayman every so a few few years. Caller, I just want to yeah. let you know you got buffering coming in. Whether or not you're walking on the beach this morning, yeah, what coming in? Buffering coming in. Sound like you're either walking on the on the on the on the beach or you got an AC okay, blowing right here. Better now? A lot better. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm on the beach. Um. And so now you can shut that chicken up. Uh, yeah, that'd you be good. Pay me for the, uh, those crows <laughs> for commercial, okay? Woody? I will. They're my trained roosters. Are you buying cards? You know, it's impossible to save a people when they are on a path to destroy themselves. And I see that happening here in Cayman more and more. 
They won't teach civics in schools because they want to keep the people barefoot and ignorant. The people don't hear when they're warned, like Mr. McField warns all the time, and they won't heed that, those warnings. And you don't recognize poor governance and poor corrupt governance when you see it spread out in front of you. As Frederick Bastiat said in 1850, legal plunder is when a group of men enact a law to legalize criminality. Now, a lot of our representatives and MLAs are members of churches and members of service clubs that for years, and top of decades and decades, have been gambling. That's for sure. But they didn't want to call it gambling. They tried every argument in the book to say it wasn't gambling. So then they legalized it. And so they can now do those activities. And our people follow along like lambs to the slaughter. Mm -hmm. Gambling is nothing more than a form of taxation upon the poor, ignorant people in the vast majority. And when you look at a country like Jamaica, their lottery, five times a day, they draw in now. That's how, that's how low down they've gone. Forget about once a week, once a day, once a month. They're drawing five that times a day. Fast as the people earn it, they're spending it on the tickets. The company that organizes it in Jamaica, it's a company called Gentech, throughout the Caribbean, Central America, and the U.S. Mr. Gilbert has a copy of the Gentech report that was done on the Cayman Islands. Right. Woody, I don't think I've ever sent it to you, but I will. Have I sent it to you? No, sir. Woody? No, sir. Woody? No, sir. I don't know how much... Hello? No, uh, Woody says no. Woody? I didn't send it to him. Well, he can't hear my voice? Hey, hello? Hello? Woody? I feel like I'm on a, a Verizon commercial now. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you now. I have answered about three times in each time an octave higher. Yes. Did you hear me all along? Was I heard you, yes. all, heard you all along. All the way up to Gentex. Okay. I, I know you normally like talking to yourself, but we heard you. Yes, sir, I do that. <laughs> when I answer myself, though, that's when you're going to call Dr. Law. Right. <laughs> uh, I made the roots of the yes. answer for me. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so... Have I ever sent you the Gentech report? No, sir. Okay, you, you get it. This is a report the government got and kept secret when in, during the UDP administration, need I say more, mm -hmm. when gambling was promoted. And at that time, they were trying to get the Ritz-Carlton Hotel to have a casino in it. And they were trying to figure out how they could twist and turn with all the other corruption that goes on in government, to get that in the Rich Carlton Hotel. And the path was going to be through doing lottery for a few years, soften it up even more. And then, after doing the lottery, then they were going to have wholesale gambling on horses, who's going to catch the biggest fish today, and all this, everything you can think of. How much rainfall we're going to have this week, and all that kind of stuff. And... Did you hear why it failed, Billy? Pardon? Did you hear why it failed? What, the Gentech report? Or no, the, 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 eff, the effort to uh, uh, legalize gambling. Or no, have a casino. Tell me as soon as I finish. Well, you got to uh, be honest with you, Mr. Billy. Um, you you got to hurry because I got to hit a break right now. And uh, mm -hmm. if you can mm -hmm. wrap it up uh, as quick as possible, uh, I would greatly appreciate that. Okay. Gentech report showed that gambling was not going to reap the Cayman Islands government tiddly squat in terms of money, a few million dollars a year. People believe that they're going to get all kind of money. They have the statistics on the countries that have it. They knew the answer. And they knew that basically they weren't interested. They weren't going to get enough money out of it. I'll send you the report. But when our legislators change and legalize for clubs and churches. That's another calculated move to control the minds of Caymanians. For them in their ignorance to not see wrong 
when it's right in front of their face. It has discredited churches, the gambling that they do. It's not lottery. It's gambling. That's what it is they do in the churches. Nothing else but gambling. Okay? And it... Lost them. All right. Didn't do that, but I got to take a break right now. We're going to be right back after that. And, and I got some social media that came through that I'll read as well. More of Game Man Crosstalk on Rooster 101 and live on Game Man 27 is next. of Nashville Insider, where we bring you the latest in country music news and happenings. Join us as we interview your favorite artists and go behind the scenes of country music's hottest events. Watch Nashville Insider right here on Cayman 27. I'm John Barry, and this is Songs and Stories. I believe in every song there's a story waiting to be told, and in every story there's a song waiting to be sung. Each week, I'll have a friend stop by who will share great songs and personal stories in a unique setting that have been part of their life and career. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Well, next Lakers on TV, and then I thought I'd try to get on top of a laundry here. <laughs> Jeff's watching a Knicks game, and then nothing. <laughs> What's going on? Well, I'm hosting a sweet throwdown to celebrate old Timbo here becoming a U.S. citizen. There he was a citizen. It's a long story. <laughs> Russell's trying to bag some woman. I stand corrected. <laughs> Calling the Superior Auto Hotline, 233-1019. Or message us on the K-Man Crosstalk Facebook page. Now, back to K-Man Crosstalk on Rooster 101 and Simulcast Live on K-Man 27. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, and happy Wednesday to all of you. We're joined, um, if you're just joining us right now, we're joined by two gentlemen, Barrister of Law, Dr. Steve McPhee, 40 years in the legal fraternity. In addition, we got Honorable Gilbert McLean as well. And we had two questions that were on the table that were posed by several different of our listeners and so forth this morning. Not this morning, but throughout the weeks and, and so forth. One was gambling, the hypocrisy that there is. And I received several different um, social media messages. It says, um, <clears throat> if you're a believer in the saying that love of money is the root of all evil, you understand way, you understand way gambling is wrong. I guess you understand that gambling is wrong. You understand gambling is wrong and sound like Woody love money. Well, let's put it this way. I don't love money. I realize that money is my, my father used to tell me money is a coward when you need it. It's never around. What I love is fair and equal treatment and proportionality. And as Mr. Billy was trying to express and articulate, I hate when certain individuals position themselves behind laws and so forth that then disenfranchises and disproportionately allows other individuals not to reap the benefits that they're so rightfully deserve. That's what I hate. I hate the hypocrisy that we have in the Cayman Islands that a certain few can do certain things whilst the rest got to sit by and watch it happen. I want to see Section 19 of this Constitution reflect in all the laws and reflect in all of the dealings within government where everything is fair, rational, lawful, and proportionate. 
And so whoever wants to put energy into anything and something, they can do so, and they can do so very quickly and easily. And you can make, make sure that your life is reflected of that. And, um, and someone says, I love what money can buy me, but I don't love money. And I tell you the truth, money, that is true. Money is just a tool. But the thing with it is, to your point, Dr. Uh, McPhil, is that you've, and, and to Mr. Adams' point, we've had administrations and people create laws to protect themselves. Sir, we have all those things says, um, that came through. It says, we need to sell numbers in all gas stations, I guess lottery tickets, and supermarkets on the island so they can take the money away from the criminal under ground. And um, they're doing that here now, and all the money leaves the country. That's right. And um, and they were saying they just don't know what Mr. Billy was talking about. I guess Mr. Billy was trying to express that that the commission, the government had commissioned uh, um, the company in a nutshell that takes care and administers the gambling in Jamaica to commission a report in the Cayman Islands. And the summary of that report was that basically all the administrative fees and so forth that may be garnered, um, I need to read the report from that would not be any, anything would be really left on the table for the Cayman Islands. But I would venture to say if anyone looked at the model of Monaco and see how the government participates in that and how they reap the benefits from proceeds within the, the casinos and so forth of that nature. But they do have a law in Monaco that the, the residents cannot enter or gamble at all. It's all for the foreigners. It's all for those in France and in the, the rest of Europe. It was that way too. I don't know if it's changed. I'm not sure as well. But personally, I don't like those kind of segregations. And I don't like that. But then again, you know, people that would do the reports and say that the, the poor is the ones that's going to suffer. Now let's transition if we can, Dr. McPhil, if you don't mind. Or well, there's another social media that came through. I agree with the last caller that the gambling money does not stay in Cayman, but leaves the country. And they posted an article as well. Uh, here's an article where the U.S. regulators shut down Western Union to crack down on the legal financing. Last year, people in Cayman sent almost $180 million in remittance. And more than $110 million of that went to Jamaica. Well, I'm going to say to that caller, based on the SEMA reports and so forth, that number is almost doubled mm -hmm. um, to that end. is almost $280 million mm. um, that was sent out. To Jamaica. And Jamaica was a large yes. proportion um, value to that in terms of remittance. But thank you very much for bringing that up. That's a, that's a very, very um, good topic as well. And here's another one that that person sent through. What if you really won the, the Mega Millions? Well, Powerball is tomorrow, is tonight. So I'm, I'm not, I'm claiming that still. But if I won the Mega Millions, would you build a dock and turn it over to the people of the Cayman Islands? Like the previous owners of Smith Backerdeer gifted it to the people of the Cayman Islands. Two things out of that. One, I'll take the latter first. The people of that own back there, the, the Websters, did not gift that to the Cayman Islands. And doctor, you correct me and both of you correct me where I go wrong. That was the first time that we had Caymanians stand up. That was the first time that was challenged in terms of um, prescriptive rights was on that property. That's right. The Websters wanted to yes. take that, turn that back in to a private beach, That's and right. they were going to develop that. The people of the Cayman Islands, the Websters did not gift that. That thing that's down there is wrong, is absolutely wrong because the history books will actually say it. I went through and I found it. The Websters wanted to take that. Correct me where I go wrong, doctor. The Websters wanted to take that. They wanted to develop it. But the people of the Cayman Islands said, no, 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 no. This has been used for generations as not only a place of bathing, but it was actually owned for launching boats and for various different things as well. And there was a prescriptive right on that property, and it was upheld within the courts. Am I fair on saying that? You fair, and that brings me to the subject matter that was in the paper a few days ago about the boardwalk in South Sound being damaged um, by a truck and, and, and the, the controversy about that. That is another... Um, a, um, illustration of prescriptive rights being eroded and, and taken away. And it, my, in my opinion, my humble opinion, one of the reasons for putting the boardwalk in South Sound is to prevent 
the, the people from exercising their prescriptive right to use the beach for camping. Hmm. Because the pres because the the prescriptive pr provision, so 1882, says that if you use the beach for swimming, bathing, picnics, uh, fishing, any, and, recreational and, and, and any recreational activities or anything and still we're there too, you have for 20 years, you have the right to continue to do that and access to, to do that too. So right. so now the people who were traditionally camping in, 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 in South Sound on that beach are not able to do that now. And mm. I, I hadn't seen the people going up there and say, well, we are going to do something about it. They just allowed them to build that. There was no um, protest against it. And so now the people does not have the right to go on that beach anymore because the boardwalk prevents them from from parking their cars and from and from camping there. So in so, essence, so. it's it's a demarcated boundary it now. It is a demarcated saying boundary. Saying that we and, have now yes. changed and we have now curtailed the property off. That's right. So therefore, That's it right. is not open any and, longer. And as I heard one particular uh. person said in a conversation, we have got the riffraff out of there. That's what I heard one person say in a conversation in a restaurant when the matter was being discussed around a table with some people from in that area. And one of the persons said, well, at least we got the riffraff out of there speaking about the people from up in Central and all of those places who traditionally used to camp there. So that's what it would be. And that's, and that's what our government is, is famous for. Our government is famous for curtailing the rights of the people, taking away prescriptive rights, not protecting them, and for changing them and for and for and for looking after the big man and for looking after the, the man with the material right the material right and the and the and the right and that's what i say that um this studio movement of unity is um is this studio movement of unity is is very dangerous for the country well, you know it, it's it's concerning to see just a lot of these things as well. And here's a, the other part I'll answer. If I had the if I wanted to make millions, would I build a dock and turn it over to the people of the Cayman Islands? No, for different different reasons. The business case scenario does not prove well, and does not guarantee any money. In fact, the the cruise executives will not guarantee any amount of persons cross and cross that threshold. I have asked that question pointy, pointly straight to them. They won't guarantee anything of that nature. And if you look at any other jurisdictions, there's no guarantee as well. Look at Falmouth. Falmouth got two piers, but only, and according to the Jamaicans that are there, that's friends with mine, on average, there's one vessel in harbor. That is just one scenario. Second scenario is, is that we have a precious gift that God gave us. The reefs on the leeward side of the Cayman Islands, which is where the Georgetown reefs are located, are unique to this island, simply because they're on the leeward side as well. And all of the marine biologists and oceanographers say the same thing. It's a unique type of reef. We have other reefs around the Cayman Islands, but that reef in particular, because it's on the leeward side, is a different type of reef. That is a foster nursery for the next generation. But I will pin my reasoning on it. Is that section 18 of the Constitution, good doctor, simply says that government must, in all consideration, Look at protecting the environment, not only for now, but for future generations. I submit to you, with climate change in effect, with the increase in water temperatures going up, one degree will kill off a 90% of the reef populations in the world. If it increases by another point percent, goes up to almost 99% of the reefs. So therefore, if we have such a valuable resource, why on earth would we destroy a valuable resource? We should be doing everything under God's green, under God's blue sky, because it's not green, under God's blue sky, to make certain that we keep something that will be unique and something that will be treasured in the world. Just like how the rainforest is, they're trying to save those things, they're trying to save the Everglades, when they realize the valuable resource that it is. And that is the reason why, that's my reasoning, is that Section 19, to, to Dr. McField's point, the Constitution is not being followed. And would I totally fund education so they can finance international baccalaureate program in every single school in the Cayman Islands that is already law but not funded? I will simply say the government is bragging that they have $160 million. I can say to you, based on finance committee for the last six years, that per student base and per student spend, 
we spend more money per student in the public school system than the private schools charge per student annually. And that's yeah. a fact. Somewhere in the region of 28% based on the last um, budget processes. So therefore, what we have is a money spend issue. I believe and I submit that until, Mr. McLean, you have been an educator, I submit that government has a mandate to provide education, but I believe they should be the regulator in it, not the provider thereof. They should hire individuals that know what to do, create a, a statutory authority that is a, a school board that will look at these things, hire an, in, an, an institution to administrate and say, here's your contract. Your outcomes are going to be based on how long you keep that contract. If you're not, you're going to be terminated. We look for somebody else so that it can be managed properly. We have a management resource and a funding resource issue, but it's all here. We have the monies here, but we're not spending it wisely and correctly. That is my my take, and that's my answers to to these callers as well. But when we come back, well, if I had if I won the lottery, mm -hmm. if I won that kind of money, I would build buy all the land I could could in the eastern part of the island, so that I could. I could, I could, I could, I could accommodate the endangered species. There you go. Which is the Caymanian children. And you pay that beauty on that. Not the, not the blue iguana, <laughs> the Caymanian children. And I would build a new town for them because we are going to need that. Well, it's going to happen. Be, because, because when they keep pushing, pushing further and further away, it's going to be, they're going to, it's going to be, we are going to have to be, we are going to have to have lands that we can live on. Um, great, my great, my grandchildren and great grandchildren to live on for the next thousands of years if if they are able to live on this con this on this on this island. Just a couple of days ago, someone told me that some people from some foreign people bought out nearly a hundred or something acres of land in Lookout. You heard about that? Mm -hmm. No. In Lookout, mm -hmm. and they're subdividing the land, and the land, and they're going to sell a lot for 175 seventy five or. Hundred and fifty or hundred something thousand dollars a lot. That's our uh, deep interior. Yep, uh, that's our deep yeah. interior. So that sort of we don't we don't even own a deep interior anymore. That's what I would do with the, with the money if I made it. I would I would I would provide a sanctuary for the endangered species of Caymanian, the Caymanian children who are not able to get a good education and who are not able to get a good technical trade. They are going to need it, or they are going to need a spaceship. To move them off this planet to take them someplace else. That's what I would be doing. <clears throat> well, I would buy a ton of property too and pay the taxes on that yes. so government can use it. But with education, yes. yes, I would then fund education if I know that their outcomes was managed by somebody else other than government and that my monies that go into central core government goes to education specifically. And if it was a const if it was a statutory body, then I would know specifically. And it was how would you say ring fenced off? Um in terms of administrative law, that government can't touch it, then I would do it. But to have government manage my money and utilize my money, no, it doesn't work that way. When we come back, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to touch on the, the issue. Yes. Um, doctor, and I want you to, to lend into this. Can politicians be prosecuted for acting in bad faith, even without the standards in public life law enacted? The opinions expressed by K-Man Crosstalk, its hosts, callers, or guests are not those of Hurley's Media or its sponsors. Here are your latest news headlines from the K-Man 27 News Team on Rooster 101's K-Man Crosstalk. Now, here's the news. Another visitor drowns in Cayman. What's up, everyone? I'm Doug Dodds. Here's today's top stories from the Cayman 27 Newsroom. A male visitor dies in Cayman's 12th water-related death of the year. Police have yet to release the identity of the victim, but they say the incident happened on Tuesday around 1045 in the morning at Georgetown's waterfront where the man was snorkeling and encountered difficulties. In other news today, the Bodentown Quarry Fire that smoldered for three weeks is extinguished, but residents in the vicinity of the long-burning fire say a government information 
Sanitation Services press release downplays the severity of the toxic smoke that they say they experienced. Fire services said due to the remote location of the quarry, there was never really a risk to the surrounding neighborhood. The fire was extinguished last Thursday. Came out 27 reached out to fire services to clarify what tests were being done to ensure that the smoke was, in fact, not toxic as they claim, but we did not hear back. And finally today, police are searching for a man who they say assaulted a woman in Sunday in West Bay. Police say emergency services were dispatched to a West Bay location following a 911 call to investigate reports that a woman was attacked by a man she knew who was armed with a knife. The man was not on scene when police officers arrived. For more news on these stories and others, click on kman27.ky or watch the news tonight at 6 with a replay at 7. For Hurley's Media, I'm Doug Dodds. Have a great day. Be a part of the conversation on K-Man Crosstalk by calling the Superior Auto Hotline, 233-1019, or message us on the K-Man Crosstalk Facebook page. Now, back to K-Man Crosstalk on Rooster 101 and Simulcast Live on K-Man 27. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you all very much for tuning in to K-Man Crosstalk. And I'm joined this morning by Barrister at Law, Dr. Steve McField, and also the Honorable Gilbert McLean. Gentlemen, one of the questions that came on the table and has been fielded um, a couple of times, and some thought-provoking um, commentary came along with them, some of those questions, and I felt I had to reach out to you, good doctor. And the question was is that, and it actually stemmed from what is happening with the port. It seems people are frustrated that government is not listening. And also you, you keep hitting every time that there's a politician in the studios, you keep going, well, why aren't you all fighting to try to enact the standards and public life law? It has been passed, but it's just sitting languishing. There's no no enactment date on there, so there's really no teeth into that law. Having said that, what came out was some, like I said, five very thought-provoking commentaries um, from various different listeners that we have. And the question is, could politicians be prosecuted for acting in bad faith, even without the standards in public life law. They cited several different things, for example, overspenditures and, and major capital um, developments and not listening to or taking advice. Some of them are, you know, over the years, they've, they've seen how things have, from the perception of the local aspect of it, how they've kind of almost been above the law and there's, there's no consequences or accountability to a lot of actions. They just simply say, oh, I'm sorry, and just run again. And if you elect me, then I could correct the issue from it. But a lot of people are saying, look at what happened with K-Man for, for not standing up and withstanding their fiduciary responsibility. We were, we were almost to the cusp of being taken over like TCI was. An FFR was thrusted upon us that government had to be um, looked over the shoulder, and in fact, this strong arm was on the shoulder during budget debates for a long period of time, and had to be approved going through the FCO and so forth. It was was a kind of a, it was a very slap in the face to this jurisdiction that has proved to be one of the financial centers of the world, and it didn't bode well with good governance for a lot of people. Mind that is just one thing that came through. What do you say, doctor, to that question? Well, now, will you remember now, politicians are elected to conduct the public um, affairs of the, of the people. As such, they are, they owe fiduciary duties to the people who elected them. The only thing about it is in Cayman, the people never hold them accountable to those fiduciary duties. So if you don't have a, a, a standard, a, a, a law, um, that, that conduct the, 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 the standard in public life, if you don't have, if that law is not enforced, then the only remedy you have is to fall back on the criminal law. So you would have to prove that what they did was a criminal, they, was, was a, they had criminal intent to do it. So you would not be able to, 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 to charge them on, under, the, under the present provisions that, that we have. Remember now that that there there was a there was a, a, a law I can't remember the law now but Gibbert um, Mr McLean can 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 elaborate on that and that came up in the in the, that came up in the context of of uh, the no loan report no of people who work in 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 the, uh, in the hospitals 
couldn't be sued. Yes. You see, they were they were they were barred from being sued from anything they did during during the time that they were employed. I think now that you sh you have to show now that they were that they were negligent, and 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 what they did, and they and and that they and they and that there was an intent to do so. So that if a politician doesn't um, carry out the wishes of the people, and for instance, embark on on doing a port that the people don't want or an airport that the people don't want, or expenditure on schools that, that the people don't want, or, or bond on schools that they have put in a, a millions of dollars in and, as, and, and left to, 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 to gather dust and to rust in the, in, the, in the air, there's nothing that people can do about it. There's nothing you can do. Because you would have to show that, that, that he did it with criminal intent. If there's, no, if, if, there's no, if there's no other law to hold him accountable, and the standard in public life law was the law that would hold politicians accountable. The only other thing that you could rely upon was the five jurisdiction duties that directors owe to companies and to their and to, and, 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 and to their principals. Would the penal code uh, attach no, to No, the penal to, code doesn't have anything in it. Officials? The penal code doesn't have anything in it that would hold politicians responsible unless you could prove that they committed a criminal offense. Well, that I mean, they had criminal intent when they did it and that and, and that and that they intended to defraud, or they they they, they or they intended to mislead, or they intended that they had a pecuniary interest for themselves or their families or whatever, and so forth, as defined under the criminal law. But but without a but without, and and that's and that's one reasons why, in my opinion, they have not enacted the law in a public uh, uh, the, the law that, that regulates their 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 um their their behavior in in public. Which is the this, which is law and um, it's not, it's, and 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 you know you know what I was reading the Mr. McLean and I went through that through the Constitution yesterday and there are there are six seven institutions that supports democracy in con, in this country under the Constitution one is the Human Rights Commission two is the Commission for Standards in Public Life the other one is the Constitutional uh, um, is the and is is the Advisory district councils, one is the complaints commissioner, and one is the register of interest, and the other one is freedom of information. We, however, one of those other five in place that deals with regulating um, the procedure in government, and 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 except for the two ones that the people ne would need to hold their elected members accountable. And that's a human. That, that is the standards and public life's law, and advisory councils. Why are those two how have not been put into place out of the seven that that that, that the constitution says that that is needed to these institutions that support democracy? Why are those not in place? It's because the politicians know that to put them in place would hold them accountable. First, the standard and public life would hold them accountable for all the work that they do. And all the things that they do, and all the things that they say, and all and the performance of their duties to the public. And secondly, the advisory district councils would give the people in the districts the power and the opportunity to hold them accountable and to tell them exactly what they think about them and how the district is run. To advise them in what they need, what they want for the districts, and how it's supposed to be done. Why is it that that's not a priority to them? You think about that. Now they have the human, they have the constitutional commissioners. Lord, they have the human rights commission. That is in. They have the complaints commissioner. That is in. They have. Well, you have the standards in public. They have life the register of interest. Too. That is in. And they have the freedom of information. That is in. But when it comes to the standard of the public life that holds them accountable. But what does that commission yeah. do now if they don't have no real it's law? It's no law. <laughs> what it's I mean I you see the words that it's echo in my head is it's is a the farce. former there's no chairperson law. there's no law well that's what the it chairperson has to said a law. Yeah, the former chairperson Miss Miss Mrs Thompson said I'm a toothless bulldog it's no law so why do you why do you create a commission then that that they really can't it's a farce do it's an illusion the 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 law the law is not enforced as uh, Mister Backfield says and you it, know, it, just, it doesn't it doesn't mean enforced to 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 enforce it you know it's not. In force. In force. It's yeah. not even underfoot. It it's has passed, not been but it's not enacted. It's in, not brought into as a in, law. As a law. You know, it is. It is there. It was passed in the legislature, 
but it has not been brought in as a law, which is dependent on cabinet saying, well, as of this day, it's going to be. And, you know, Mr. McField made, made the, the points there very uh, straightforward and forceful, as he always do. But uh, could, could I just uh, quickly state what the seven principles of public life are? <laughs> Self, selfish, selflessness. Holders of public office should act solely in terms of the public interest. Integrity. Holders of public office must avoid placing themselves under any obligation to people or organizations that might try to inappropriately to influence them in their work. They should not act or take decisions to gain financially or other material benefits for themselves, their family, or their friends. They must declare and resolve any interest in relationships. Objectivity, holders of public office must act and take decisions impartially, fairly, and on merit, using the best evidence and without discrimination or bias. Accountability, holders of public office are accountable to the public for their decisions and actions and must submit themselves to the scrutiny necessary to ensure this. Openness. Holders of public office should act and take decisions in an open and transparent manner. Information should not be withheld from the public unless there are clear and lawful reasons for so doing. Honesty. Holders of office should be truthful. Leadership. Holders of public office should exhibit these principles in their own behavior. They should actively promote and robustly support the principles and be willing to challenge poor behavior wherever it occurs. Well, now, Woody, can you imagine if this law, referred to by yourself to Mr. McPhee, the standards of public uh, life, were in place and those seven uh, principles there some of the things that's been happening in Cayman and are happening now wouldn't they be in some trouble with it you could go to court then yeah. because they would be in breach of that law yeah you could go to court and get judicial review accountability, accountability openness, and openness. Yeah. you could go to court and get that because there is a law that would, that would give you the right to do so but there's no law now to give you the right to do this now yeah. Before we got to take this break, I got to kind of read something to you and maybe you can um, tell me what, what it means when we come back from this break. It is from the Penal Code 2017 revision. It's section 121. It says, um, and the, the, the subtopic of it is disobedience of lawful duty. It says, a person who willfully disobeys any law by doing any act which shall law, which Shut such a law forbid, pardon me, ladies and gentlemen, or by omitting to do any act with such law requires to be done, and which concerns the public or any part of the public, commits an offense, and unless the law provides some other penalty, is liable to imprisonment for two years. We'll be right back after the short message. If you would like to participate, 233-1019, 233-1019, or WhatsApp me, 324 1019, I got some WhatsApps that came through. More of Game Man Crosstalk on Rooster 101 and live on Game Man 27 is next. Some say the time of miracles has passed, but we see miracles all around us every day. Some could not walk, some could not breathe, some had lost all hope, but something amazing happened. Something that can't be analyzed or quantified. Something that is more than good medicine. Holy Cross. Australia's best anglers go head-to-head -head in this premier tournament. The Australia Fishing Championships. This popular fishing show sees the country's best casting their lines across the outback. From the freshwater lakes and rivers to the spectacular tropical waters of the coast. 
these fishermen try to reel in the biggest fish out there. Watch on Cayman 27th to see who lands the biggest catch. Take an adventure through Central Australia in this new show, 4x4 Adventure. This rough and rugged expedition follows the tracks of explorers as they map out the territories of the Central Outback. Along the way, the crews will deal with the problems of four-wheel driving while battling the air-ridden, dry conditions of the desert. Watch 4x4 Adventure. Watch as some of the world's most talented people put their skills to the test as they attempt to make their mark in the record books. You'll witness some of the craziest, scariest, most bizarre stunts people will do all in the name of stardom. It's the ultimate Guinness World Records and it's right here on Canon 27. Capture all the action. by calling the Superior Auto Hotline, 233-1019. Or message us on the K-Man Crosstalk Facebook page. Now, back to K-Man Crosstalk on Rooster 101 and Simulcast Live on K-Man 27. <clears throat> all right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very much for tuning in to K-Man Crosstalk. And if you're just joining me right now, I have Barr Sir at Law, Dr. Steve McPhee. In addition, I have Honorable Gilbert McLean as well. And we're talking about questions that have been coming through a lot lately about can politicians be held accountable um, before elections for anything that they've done wrong or acted in bad faith. And the good doctor is trying to answer some of those questions for some of you and for all of you that are out there to let you know what the various laws are and what your rights are. And before we ended that, that section, good doctor, I read you section 121. And for those that are just listening now, and I gave you a question, the, the subtopic of that one was disobedience of lawful duty. Section 121 of the Penal Code 2017 revision reads as follows. A person who willfully disobeys any law by doing any act which such law forbids or by omitting to do any act which such a law requires to be done and which concerns the public or any part of the public commits an offense and unless the law provides some other penalty is liable to imprisonment for two years. Well, Woody, now, when you read that, that section is subject, that section makes you liable subject to breaking some other law. Right. Yes? Now, the standard of public life sets out what the things you can do and what the things you cannot do and what the things you're re responsible for so and the sanctions for it. So, if we had a, if, if we, if we had a, if we had a, if we had a, if we had a, 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 a standard in public life law. Yes, sir. Then integrity, objectivity, accountability, openness, honesty, and leadership. If those things were lacking in a politician or being breached by him, we could go and use Section 121 for a remedy. Mm -hmm. So even if but, they but, broke a, a subordinate law, let's just say gambling law or music and dancing law, that... The penalties in that could not be there. And the pen, I mean, if yes, they, yes. If, 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 if there's something that he's supposed to do or not supposed to do in the music and gambling law or in or some other law, you can go to Section 125 and you can get that enforced. Right. Now, how are you going to get that enforced? Well, that's the question, huh? How are you going to get that enforced? The law doesn't say who, but I, I presume that the law means that it would have to be a prosecution by the DPP or office or by the Solicitor General's office for some breach of the law. Right. Suppose that those departments do not want to do that. Then the remedy would have to be in, in the citizen. The citizen would have to take your own money and then go to court under judicial review or take a private prosecution uh, to, 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 to enforce the rights that the citizen has because 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 his 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 rights were breached by the politicians under some law. Hmm. And that has happened before in England and other places. But suppose, suppose the, the suppose a politician does breach the provisions of a law, and and it calls for sanctions or by prosecution by the by the by the legal department or by the solicitor general's department, and they refuse to do so. How? 
What's the citizen going to do then? What's rem who, who, who's the citizen going to get to champion his rights in the, co in the courts? You tell me that. Hmm. You see, that so, 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 so without, without, without a, without, without a, without an educated electorate and an astute electorate that scrutinizes everything and without these, these with, and without these institutions supporting democracy that the constitution clearly saw would be a problem, especially in, in faraway places like this. From, from, I'm going to say, from most civilized democracies, where 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 people who are criticized for, for even for even bad policy in government will resign, and and take an exit from government, that will not happen in Cayman. That will not happen in Cayman or around the Caribbean. Sometimes you have to kick them out of the office. Sometimes you have to the court has to has to has to rule them out of office. And here we have these provisions, these democratic provisions in the highest law of the land, the Constitution. And they're not obeyed by the people that we elected to represent us and to, and to protect democracy. Now, you tell me now, how is it that they, these people now can go to, to Great Britain, to England, and can advocate for more autonomy, hmm. can advocate for, for a right to, to say who's going to be governor? of this country when they have not even implemented the constitution that we expect them to implement to 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 have democracy to work it's not it's not the it's not the contradiction of all contra political and constitutional contradictions to me it seems to me that something is absolutely wrong here well you see i i i i got to ask what I, I i what i wonder about is that while England is advocating same-sex marriages, and that seems to be the only thing that really matters to them because that is their uh, uh, measurement of equality, what I wonder about is why don't the UK, by order and council, put in place this standards of public life because... We surely need it. I mean, it it cannot be that they don't know because they know everything that's happening here in Cayman as good as us or better. Probably no better. Why don't they say, okay, this law, we are putting it into, uh, we're going to put it into effect because we have concerns such as has been uh, articulated by Dr. McField and where he has shown the, the, the various reasons for it and what would build on the whole process of democracy? Let them use the the nuclear option, as they say, and put that in place. Because this would deal with a lot of things that's ongoing right now. Openness, accountability, transparency. You, Those are the things that's being refused right now. If you want a good example, look at the port. Well, i got to ask this question, good doctor. i got to go and take a break right now. But I want to ask this question right before we end the break. And if you can do it a little succinct, or maybe I'll just ask it and you can answer it. One, it's a two-part question. What is the Constitution? And I'm going to put a, a semicolon there. Is it the primary law of the land and all others are subordinate laws? That's a question. What is the Constitution? Is it the primary law of the land and all other laws that the parliament or the, the legislature passes as subordinate laws that's that's my two-part question to you when we come right back more of gay man crosstalk on rooster 101 and live on gay man 27 is next it's that time of year again for the annual K-Man 27 Parade of Lights. Brought to you by Bogle Insurance Brokers Limited. We're calling all boats to join us Saturday, December 1st at Kamana Bay as the water comes to life with this year's theme, Christmas Around the World. It's completely free to enter, and there's a chance to win $1,000 and two general admission tickets to Kaboo. Or enter just for fun. Private and commercial boats are welcome. For more information and to register your boat, click on kman27.ky. 
Champion House restaurant serving Cayman for over 30 years. Start your day off right with our breakfast, fruits, pastries, hot cereals, entree, and so much more. Stop by for lunch. Our buffet offers salad, soup, entrees, and desserts. Check out our website for details on our new dinner menu. And don't forget about catering. We can customize any menu to suit your needs. Champion House Restaurant, where the islanders dine. Get ready to laugh as TV's funniest hidden camera show will have you in stitches. Just for laughs, the Laugh Out Loud Comedy Show catches unsuspecting people in some of the funniest situations. It's just for laughs, and it's only here on K-Man 27. Catch it Monday through Friday. Mom, I'm hungry. Me too. Honey, I need to fix the top in the kitchen today. <sighs> okay, okay. Everybody come with me. I know exactly where we can go. At Countryside, we have everything you need. Grab home essentials at A.L. Thompson's. Convenient banking at Cayman National. Delicious slices from Pizza Hut. Always made fresh sandwiches at Subway. And find the best prices on island at Foster's Food Fair IGA. Countryside. Everything you need and more. Another visitor drowns in Cayman. What's up, everyone? I'm Doug Dodds. Here's today's top stories from the Cayman 27 newsroom. A male visitor dies in Cayman's 12th water-related death of the year. Police have yet to release the identity of the victim, but they say the incident happened on Tuesday around 1045 in the morning at Georgetown's waterfront where the man was snorkeling and encountered difficulties. In other news today, the Bodtown Quarry Fire that smoldered for three weeks is extinguished, but residents in the vicinity of the long-burning fire say a government information Services press release downplays the severity of the toxic smoke that they say they experienced. Fire services said due to the remote location of the quarry, there was never really a risk to the surrounding neighborhood. The fire was extinguished last Thursday. Came out 27 reached out to fire services to clarify what tests were being done to ensure that the smoke was, in fact, not toxic as they claim, but we did not hear back. And finally today, police are searching for a man who they say assaulted a woman in Sunday in West Bay. Police say emergency services were dispatched to a West Bay location following a 911 call to investigate reports that a woman was attacked by a man she knew who was armed with a knife. The man was not on scene when police officers arrived. For more news on these stories and others, click on kman27.ky or watch the news tonight at 6 with a replay at 7. For Hurley's Media, I'm Doug Dodds. Have a great day. Be a part of the conversation on K-Man Crosstalk by calling the Superior Auto Hotline. 233-1019 or message us on the K-Man Crosstalk Facebook page. Now, back to K-Man Crosstalk on Rooster 101 and Simulcast Live on K-Man 27. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you all very much for tuning in letting us be part of your morning and part of your day. And if you're just tuning in right now, I just want to sincerely thank all of you for tuning in and let you know that I have with us two gentlemen in the studios, Barrister of Law, 40 years in practice, Dr. Steve McPhee. In addition, we have Honorable Gilbert McLean. And we're talking right now of questions that came through a lot over the last, I would say, fortnight. Good doctor. And it was primarily based on a lot of things that you were saying and you were calling in. And you're, you're quite disturbed. And there's two things that have been stuck in your craw. And people are listening. I just want to let you know that, sir. Um, and like I said, the, the correspondence that came through were very comprehensive and thought provoking even for me. And I want to sincerely thank the individuals for taking the time. One of the questions was, could politicians simply because we don't have a recall vote and so many different things, could politicians be held, um, criminally liable or even punished by acting in bad faith? Because it seemed like there's no accountability over the years. Um, past administrations, even current. And people are just wondering, well, what would do we do? Are, are people above the law? Are they legislat legislators above the law? Um, 
we see that they have parliament pri- privilege. That's only when they're speaking on the floor of parliament that they can say whatever they want to say about an individual. But that doesn't neg- does that negate them to to bypass all laws? And the question I asked you right right at the very last end: the Constitution is it the primary law? Right? What is the Constitution? It is the that's primary it. law, and I just like to read to you what it says in in section fifty nine. Now, before I go there, the Legislative Assembly is the... What is the Legislative Assembly? The Legislative Assembly is the is the institution in which all laws emanates from, isn't it? Yes? You agree with that? Mm-hmm. Sure. Well, this is what Section 59 says. There shall be a legislature of the Cayman Islands which shall consist of a majesty and a Legislative Assembly. Subject to this constitution... The Legislative Assembly may make laws for the peace, order, and good governance of the Cayman Islands. So it is from the Constitution that the Legislative Assembly gets its power to make laws. It is from the Constitution then that all laws flows from. Without a Constitution, we would have anarchy. The Constitution then is the highest law in the land. It is from this law, this Constitution, that everything gets its legitimacy. The Legislative Assembly, the Cabinet, the judiciary, all other institutions gets its, 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 its legitimacy from this piece of, this, this, from this document. So this document is the highest law in the land. So that's a, that's a law. That's, that's right. The primary law. That's the primary law of the land. All right. From which all, all other law flows, flows. So in your legal definition now, good barrister, as a, as a good attorney, as you told me once, you have to have the, the answer to your questions before you have them in your head. What is the legal definition of the word shall? It means, shall means, means that you, you don't have a discretion. May, may, may means that you have a discretion. You may do it or you may not do it. And it depends on your, on your opinion whether you will do it or not. Shall is a direction. This must be done. That's what shall means. And when you, and when you, and when, and when you, you see the word shall in a law, it means that you have no other alternative. It sh- it must be done, and it will be done, and it should be done, and it can be, and it can, and and what has not been done can be enforced, can well, be done. Can I ask you then, if you don't mind, sir, for my hearing, for everyone else's hearing, could you read the first paragraph of the standards and public life that's contained within the the Constitution there? Yes, section one seventeen. You have it there, Mr. McLean? Yes. Can you read that, then? <clears throat> yes. Uh, under the heading, Commission for Standards in Public Life, 117.1, there shall be in and for the Cayman Islands a Commission for Standards in Public Life, referred to in this section as, quote, the Commission, end quote. Okay. And uh, I don't want to conflate the two issues, but if you can read, go to 119 as well for me, please, and read the first paragraph of that one. 119, under the heading Advisory District Councils, subject to this Constitution, a law enacted by the legislature shall provide for the establishment functions, and jurisdiction of councils for each electoral district to operate as as advisory bodies to the elected members of the Legislative Assembly. All right. But not much clearer, I don't think. (laughs) Shall. We've established the definition of shall in the legal realm. Uh, Yes. Now, I'm going to read to your hearing one more time, good doctor. Section 121 of the Penal Code, mm-hmm. Revision 2017. A person who willfully disobeys any law. Any law. Mm-hmm. So that's the primary law of the land. Mm-hmm. So what it then says by disobeys any law of the land by doing any act, mm-hmm. which such law forbids. Mm-hmm. So to me, that law forbids you ignoring it because mm-hmm. it's a directive. That's right. So aren't they in breach then of that law? And therefore, and by the penal code, breaking the Constitution, two sections of it that we know of, 
it could be a lot more. That's right. For 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 example, there's a district council's law that's that the government refused to 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 operate. There's a district council law that's in force, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. The government says it's unjust. Yeah. Because it, it it was it was enacted and during the the UDP time when they were in government and therefore it gives more power to the to the then leader of of the of the country, the, the first premier, to um to appoint district councils because the district councils under that law is appointed by the cabinet. The it district votes be. the district votes for a council and then the cabinet appoints the council. This government say that that was unfair. This government has had now two terms in office, and they have done nothing to rectify the unfairness about it that they say that they say they they they, 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 they the law brought about. And it's been done from 2011. You see, and that law that law came to force from 2011. If the if if it was if the law was unfair and it gave that other government a priority and an an advantage. And the government was worried about that. Don't you think the government would have, from 2011, now time to rectify that situation by bringing an amendment to the law into the Legislative Assembly when they've had two majorities? Mm -hmm. You tell me, if you had two majorities and you say the law was unfair, that that would not be one of the first things that you did when you, if you were leader of a country, a democratic country. The government has done nothing about it. And the reason why? Because if you read it, You'll see why the government does not want any to do anything about it. It says to operate as advisory bodies to the elected members of the assembly. The government does not want anyone from their electoral district to advise them on anything. Because then they came on islands, once you get elected, you become a god. You become a Caesar. Right. Mm. Well, and you and you and the people then, the, the people them are, are mere father. Well, I'm 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 good. And that's the reason why you have no district councils. Like, and I don't want to do the electoral district, except you have a de facto district council in, in the north side. Well, I got to ask you. A district council in fact, but not in law. And not in law. But I got to ask you, good doctor, we have, we have the body, Standards and Public Life Commission, that's in, in force. We have that man. Manned. But what, 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 what power does it have? Well, no, but here's the question I got to ask you. And you see, this is where it comes down to having that law in enacted as well. But I tell me if my reasoning is so abstract that it is unreasonable. The Public and Standards Life Commission has a mandate by the Constitution. It's laid out there. That's their primary law. I don't care what board you're on. The primary law that governs you is this law, the Constitution, and whatever law, the subordinate law afterwards that directs you to do what you do. That is my interpretation and many other um, attorneys think the same way. Now I got to submit to you, there's two governing bodies that implement law and prosecute law. One is the DPP and the other is this particular one if we're not conflating the two, the Standards and Public Life Commission. They're sitting there languishing. The previous chairperson, Ms. Mrs. Thompson, articulated her frustration on many levels many times saying, I'm a toothless bulldog. I'm sitting here. I see things happening, but there's nothing that I can do about it. I submit to you. A person who willfully disobeys any law by doing any act which such law forbids or by omitting to do any act which such law requires to be done. The Constitution requires that to be done, sir, shall. Why is the Standards and Public Life Commission going to the DPP or going to the Foreign Commonwealth Office Saying, listen, we are charged with this duty, 117 under the Constitution. We're sitting here. The law of the penal code is very clear. You must do something post haste, either to tell the, 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 the cabinet, which the cabinet makes a decision when the law will be enacted. So the cabinet, to me, I would say to you, sir, I submit to you, am I so unreasonable to think the cabinet is holding it up? So therefore, every member of the cabinet is liable of disobeying any law by doing any act, which by omitting any act to be done, which well, is that one. But if the law is not into force, would it? But the primary law is. The, the, the Constitution is. Yes, and that's why I, 
that's what I said when I opened first at this at, 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 to this morning. That's what I talk about the lack of political and constitutional and legal education with the public. And I'm going to use this, what Mr. Um, Anton said when he was trying to stand for election in Baden Town. He says, yes, yeah, since there's three little words, three little words that I, sh I hear all through this campaign is three little words. Get Anton out. <laughs> three little words, he says, I sh Every time I turn the corner, is three little words I hear in this campaign. Get Anton out. Well, there are three little words in this country that people are not used to, and that's freedom, justice, and equality. <laughs> if you had freedom, justice, and equality in the heads and in the tongues of everybody in this country, you would have a public and standard life law, and you would have a district council's law. And that is something that the government does not want you to know about those three little words, freedom, justice, and equality. Because why? They are fighting words. That's the reason why the, you, the government doesn't want to educate you to those things. Hmm. We got to go take this last break. We got callers on line 233 I just want you to hold on to the Superior Auto Hotline for me, please. More of Game Man Crosstalk on Rooster 101 and live on Game Man 27 is next. We're not just the most reliable energy service in the Caribbean. Whether it's for your entertainment, lighting a path to your future, or making sure that you and your family are secure. We're there for you when it matters most. Your safety and our reliability are our top priority. We are committed to remaining the number one utility service in the Caribbean. We are CUC. We dance them flare, flavor with a beat. Holy pass we are in the street. Young Miguel age are old, move your feet. When face if we dance, everybody up in it. Grace, feel the vibe, can't you feel it? Grace, delicious, so nutritious. Yes, quality when it tastes. Want affordable? Look for the label. Flare, we are flare because the spice is flaring. Flavor with a beat, no other brand than the near way. One taste and you know grace is real. This week on Nashville Insider, find out which of your favorite artists are nominated for the 52nd Annual CMA Awards. Then, Dan and Shay toast to their latest number one hit, Tequila, and give a big thanks to fans. We chat with the stars of Beautifully Broken. They're on the red carpet for the film's big premiere. And does this face look familiar? We'll talk to funny man Cletus T. Judd as he makes his country music comeback. We're on a mission to reinvent the way we look at sport. En route, we'll be meeting the biggest names and the brightest stars, looking to pinpoint the precision of success. We're all born with some degree of athleticism. As you get to that top of the pyramid, it's the very small things that make the difference. Work hard, stay focused, to get it done. I know everything I did, I did it for a reason. You have to be a little bit insane, I think. Game Man Crosstalk Facebook page. Now back to Game Man Crosstalk on Rooster 101 and Simulcast Live on Game Man 27. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you all very much for tuning in and letting us be part of your morning and part of your day. Um, we got callers on the line. Let's just see if they're still there. Hello, caller. Pleasant good morning to you, Mr. DeCosta, Mr. Ma Mark Fiegel, and Mr. McLean. Hey, My name is Ornus Bowen. Thank you. Uh, well, I'm calling about, uh, I know Mr. McLean and Mr. McFeely will, will remember. Back in 1972, when they had surveyed off South Sound to cut a canal, to saying that ships wouldn't have to go around the island to cross the island. They could go through the canal that would bring revenue to the country. But yet, they would put a bridge that would only come down Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And each person living east of Kuroad 
would have to pay two dollars to pass out into Georgetown. The Honorable Jim Gordon came around and advised the people. At the time, I was a very young man. Didn't went to see, or yes, I had made one trip. And he asked him if anyone had been to Newport News, Virginia. At the time, gentlemen, I did not. But afterward, I had the privilege, me and Mr. William, Mr. William Gilbert's relative there, of going to Virginia to pick up locomotives, and I saw exactly what the Honorable Jim Barton was talking about. There is a bridge there also that goes down twice a day, 6 o'clock in the morning and 6 o'clock in the evening, for all the colored people to come to work on the dry dock. They're not allowed to mix with the white people or the so-called white people. And it was the same thing our leaders wanted to do with us here in the Cayman Islands. And about this dock and the Chinese, I was in Kenya a few years ago, and me and the vice president was traveling together. And he said to me, I said to him, who built your road? He said, oh, the Chinese is building the road. I said, well, why don't they use a good material to build the road? Because back there, 200 feet, the road have done broke up. He said, yes. I said, because they're using the mud and the trees to build up the ground instead of using good materials. And if they do that stop a job bug up there, what do you think they will do here in our island? I'm not against a dock, but I don't think that Georgetown is the place for it. Anyway, you gentlemen have a good day. I wish you all the best and God bless. All right. Thank, thank you very much. You. And you know, I, I um, and I got to say with, uh, for example, the dock, and I want to I, I say this as a disclaimer, and I say this as well. The chairman of the Port Authority, I have the utmost respect for him. I've learned that uh, over the years of working with him. And one thing that, that was done under his watch was that the minutes of the meeting will be posted online, unlike how it was before, where it actually went to judicial review, if you remember correctly, to get some of those things done. And sadly, in reading some of those minutes, there's nothing really posted. Even when I was there, we had to find out at public meetings what was happening with the port. Those are the kind of things that bother me because those individuals are going to be the ones that are going to be tasked with managing what's thrusted upon them. But here's a question, good doctor, and I want you to, both of you gentlemen, because I believe both of you are very, um, obviously, Dr. McPhail, you're, you're a historian, and Gilbert, you have always been a fighter um, within the, the civil service. Someone's kind of questioning um, where I said that the, the Smith Bacadier, as Miss Georgette would tell me, it's not called Smith Cove, it's called Smith Bacadier. That's the correct name of it. Mm -hmm. Smith Bacadier was fought for by the people of the Cayman Islands. And it was not given to them, it was not bequested to them. Or if it was, it was not done willfully because of the issue that went before. And it was one of the first cases about prescriptive rights. The recent sale that transpired by Smith Bacadere was a separate parcel. That's right. Right? A parcel that was the north of it. Mm -hmm. It was a complete different parcel. So a lot of people, please make sure in mind, what we call Smith Cove or Smith Bacadere proper was the one that has always been for bathing, for recreational purposes, for fishing and so forth. That was fought for by the people in the courts as one of the first cases of prescriptive rights. The parcel that was sold right before the last election. Remember, it was last election. <laughs> and everything is done right before elections. Was a separate and complete parcel that was bought, mm -hmm. not by the government, not sold by the Websters, but was bought by a private entity. In fact, it was part of the Stan Thomas um, yeah, right. whole cool. entire land that's deal right. that the that the, the the Kimpton is sitting on, and that Dart had acquired. So that was Dart's property. Dart sold it to, I believe, Bronte or something of that nature. Developers, which is a local attorney, and that attorney sold it to government. So if you want a chronological aspect of it, those are the, uh, is of that in nature. It was not sold by the Websters of the government. In fact, they had to, they had to kindly say they're giving it over to that's save right. good faith. Mm -hmm. um, am I fair in saying that? You're fair in saying that. That's, that's, that's the correct historical background to that. All right, gentlemen, um, we got less than four minutes, and I just want to sincerely thank both of you. Doctor, you got any closing words? I just would say the political medicine has to be 
dispense to fight the political lies or ills that we suffer. We cannot get, get socially, social, economic, and political well if we um, are stuck in an emergency political waiting room. So the fight is for these laws, the ones we talked we talk about this morning, to be put into force to give us our constitutional right in a constitutional democracy. So I want to celebrate and elevate my society and not to be segregated and denigrated by injustice and social and economic brutality. My hustle to reach this educational stage in the constitutional and political reality in my life must not and will not be discarded as a mere thorn in the body politics. All right, good doctor. And before I take your last um, statement, um, Honorable McLean, here's a question that came through to both of you. If you can ask the panel if the Premier fails to enact district councils, then is it responsible of the governor to do so? Well, uh, Woody, yes. I, I think that it would be. And let me say the governor, it, uh, the, the British government. I mean, if, if the British government is really taking an interest, as I think they should, in what is happening here under the uh, the entities for in, in support of democracy, the two main ones that's outstanding is the standards in public life and, of course, the other one is the district councils, which gives the, the people in each of these single constituencies now the opportunity of saying to their, their representatives, here's what we think we need, here's what I want you to go and represent me on. And it's not being done. And now it's, it's what, uh, 11, it, it's seven years. I mean, good heavens, there must be something else that the UK can uh, decide on and act swiftly on and forcefully on. These are two that I think that should be done and can be done. Well, the thing with it is, you know, I, I, I know we got a short time, but it, it harkens back to the Partnership for Progress. You remember that joke of a paper, mm -hmm. that joke of a time, the white paper that went through, mm -hmm. talking about democracy and talking about fighting for democracy. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that the Foreign Commonwealth Office did was uh, simply about financing. They imposed the FFR on top of us, but not all the subordinate things that actually enforces and underpins democracy, which is a laugh. But you, you, got, you, got, to, you got to look at it this way. We went, the people agreed to a, a law to, to regulate their business, their public business, in a referendum. That law became, that, 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 that they, they, they went, they, 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 that, that agreement came out of consultations between the people and the, the administering country, the masters. Right. Well, that's a law that good. he, that's a law that came about, Woody. All right. And the people, and, and, and. And therefore, and therefore, the people have a right to see that that law is enforced. And like Mr. McLean said, the governor or the United Kingdom government should make sure that the people here um, have their democratic rights in, uh, taken care of and the, the, the government should do that. And All that right. is something that they have the power to do through the governor's office. All right. Well, I, we got less than 20 seconds. What well, uh Someone asked you about money and so on. What would you do if you had won the lottery and whatnot? And mm -hmm. uh, maybe the Christian people here could refer to Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 19. A feast is made for laughter, and wine maketh merry, but money answereth all things. They're not my words. It's in the Ecclesiastes. And the love of money, and you see people get it conflated. Love of money is the root of all evil, not money. That's right. It's the love of it. Yep. All right, gentlemen, ladies, and everybody that's listening, thank you all very much. And I want to say to all of you, tomorrow's going to be Thunderous Thursdays. And thank you very much for tuning in and letting us be part of your morning. A part of your day will be remiss of me not to do my normal closing. If you have a pet, please consider spaying or neutering that pet today to keep the unwanted pet population low in the Cayman Islands. In addition... Celebrate life. Enjoy it. You heard from Ecclesiastes just now. Go and celebrate. But please, don't do so drinking and driving or boating and drinking. Until tomorrow, God speak, hey man. I'm your host, Woody DaCosta. Three, two, one. Here we go. If it matters to you, it matters to us. We're Cayman 27, Cayman Informed.
Superbly situated in southern England's rural heartland, few destinations can match the amazing diversity of Salisbury and Stonehenge. Known as a city in the countryside, the magnificent medieval town of Salisbury has an incredible history. Originally built on an Iron Age hill fort at Old Sarum, it was moved in its entirety nearly two miles in the 1200s. A fine example of a planned medieval town, Salisbury has largely preserved its original layout. Historic streets and alleyways, charming half-timbered buildings, traditional English houses, and picturesque shopping streets characterize the city of Salisbury.